A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a No KOs 100% Achievements playthrough of Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster. This is the Steam version of the game. So the objective of this run is to get every single achievement in one playthrough. So this means getting all Beast GRE entries, all summons, getting the adamant armor from the pink puffs, getting Excalibur, going through every single map area and picking up every chest and every item. And also getting Cecil, Rosa, Kane, Rydia, and Edge to level 70. And defeating every boss. Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster does start with this pretty horrible looking font, but uh, we can actually swap that out. There's a little mod that allows you to do that. So these first two battles, if you've played this game, you no doubt already know how they go. It's just autopilot. Um, I believe that the auto battle killing the uh, floating eyeballs and the uh, zoos. I don't actually know that it actually uh, counts towards the bestiary entries, but may as well assume that it does. We wind up fighting zoos whenever we go to fight cockatrices for farming the cockatrice summon later anyway. So it's like, it's just not even an entry to worry about. Basically, when I went and did the bestiary entries, I uh, went and I recorded each monster that uh, doesn't appear in a, in a mandatory battle or doesn't appear whenever you open up a chest. So that's about... Eh, I actually I actually don't know how many enemies.
flick this hidden switch over here and get these three treasure chests.
So to start, we're going to change the battle speed, battle messages to fast, and then we're going to leave cursor on. We're not going to pick up any items in uh, the town of Baron proper until we come back from Mesidia, which is going to be a lot later. Because then everything in the town of Baron will be unlocked and we can just go. The Mist Cave, there are four treasure chests. So we already got our goblins, we don't need to kill anything else. Really you don't need to worry about like leveling up or anything when you're playing Cecil, like Dark Knight Cecil. Beyond killing singular enemies once to get the bestiary entry, I just run away from every other fight. So we got the moth, we got the insectus. There's our sword rat. I don't know if sword rats actually come in uh, mobs of four or anything like that, but sword rats actually do quite a bit of damage if you're not careful. Starting with segment two, I actually did install the uh, the font mod. I would highly recommend looking into it. Basically just replace the English font with the Japanese font and it's a lot wider. Therefore more legible. I don't know why they opted for that other really, really thin font. It doesn't even look good on like mobile phones. Anywho's in. So we're gonna just use uh, jump and attack and then just auto battle. And by doing that, Kane will just like automatically keep jumping, just keep repeating the same actions over and over again. And we're just gonna wait for the uh, dragon to dissolve into mist. Kane was already in the air when the dragon dissolved into mist, unfortunately, so we're going to get hit with cold mist. But we can just hit defend on both Cecil and Kane, and then hit auto battle, and then it'll fast forward the fight. I didn't really do that this fight, did I? Yeah, I did. Okay. Right. Plus the Mist Dragon shows back up. We can just resume jumping and attacking and just turn on auto battle. in Pixel Remaster, every boss dying has like the same boss death animation from Final Fantasy VI. So here we're going to unequip Kane because Kane is no longer in our party. Then we can sell all of his shit and make tons of money.
so we're solo Cecil on the way to Kaipo. These Desert Sahagans are going to be different from a Sahagan that you fight as a mandatory encounter, so... Defeating these guys here is a good thing. Gives us that other bestiary entry. So the Baron Soldiers are actually a little different in Pixel Remaster compared to like the other uh, releases of the game. Basically, if you kill all the Baron Soldiers, then the General will run away. But if you kill the Baron General, then the Baron Soldiers all commit seppuku. So we want to leave one Baron Soldier alive. And just go ahead and take out the General and then take out the other Baron Soldier last. Not only does it mitigate the number of hits that they do on Cecil, but uh, it also keeps the Baron Soldier from killing himself. So that way Cecil gets all the EXP from this. Can always use a little bit more EXP here and there. No reason not to get it. So at this store, we're going to get rid of the spear, the iron armor, the helm, the gloves, just all of Kane's items. And also get rid of the Gasol greens. And then we're just going to buy a lot of potions. No need for Phoenix Downs, no need for nothing else. There's no secrets here, there's just a singular item that you can pick up. Uh, I was actually supposed to go to the house and uh, talk to Rosa, but that'll be next segment. Another flying eye and insectus in case you didn't get that in the mist cave. So, yeah, you can't really do no damage runs of, like, Final Fantasy games. So I did the next best thing. There's the ether in the pot there. I just did the next best thing, which was, like, a no KOs run, and just finished the game without having a single character get KO'd. It's not exactly a low-level run, but... I 
think it still makes it kind of interesting at least. I wouldn't mind doing a series of like low level playthroughs or other similar challenges in Final Fantasy games in the future. But in order for us to be able to progress with the game, we had to go back to Kaipo and talk to Rosa, who is uh, laid up with a pretty bad case of heat stroke. The next mandatory monsters that we have to find in the underground waterway here are the Gigantodes, Red Mooses, Zombies, Vile Shells, Toadgers, Killer Fish, Tiny Mage, Alligator, and Water Bug. There is a, there is a lot to find here. Definitely easier to wait until you get Tella before going to try to get those bestiary entries. killer fishes here. Uh, I didn't exactly uh, do any due diligence on uh, what element every monster is weak to before I went and I uh, killed them all. So it's like I could have done it a lot faster, but either way, yeah, the killer fish, we kill those in just like one bolt. We also got vile shell and water bug here, all of which are weak to thunder. We want to go all the way this way and then go behind the waterfall here because here we can get an X potion, a dry ether, and a phoenix down. All of which are very, very handy items. I got a little carried away and killed another set of killer fishes. But it's good to get like these levels for Rydia. So it was kind of worth it to kill them, because then that way, you know, Rydia is able to absorb more hits in the middle of battle. So the, the escape mechanics are also changed in the Pixel Remaster. I don't know if this is a change that starts with uh, Final Fantasy IV on PSP or what, but if I recall correctly, all the way up to the DS version of Final Fantasy IV, if you escape, then you drop Gil whenever you run away, but such is not the case in Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster. Some other differences include... Uh, and I have no idea when this uh, when this starts, like which uh, which port this starts with. But arrows don't deplete whenever you use them, and also there's an auto battle. I'm pretty sure the auto battle started with either the PSP release or the DS release. You probably also noticed by now that you can move diagonally 
starting with the uh, the PS1 port of Final Fantasy IV on uh, Final Fantasy Chronicles collection on PS1, the one that came with uh, Final Fantasy IV and Chrono Trigger, you're actually able to run on the overworld map. Only thing is, though, the load times in that version were horrendous, so it would still make the uh, SNES version definitively run faster. Even though you could move faster on the overworld map, it didn't really help out very much due to the horrible load times. So yeah, we uh, we rested. Tella and Rydia's HP are back up. HP and MP are back up, so we can just use those to get rid of these Zambonis over here. Bomb Fragment, super useful against zombies, especially because there will be a point where we do not have Rydia or Tella. We'll be going up against more undead type enemies and Cecil's sword only does like one damage to those. Red Moose, all weak to fire, impervious to physical attacks. There's a hidden wall here. We're just going to go around it in order to get this treasure chest over here. Hidden items are pretty much only in towns. Whereas treasure chests and whatnot are pretty much the only thing that you get in dungeons. I just ran away from that. I should have actually fought them all because I needed to get the, uh, the tiny mage fight. I don't know. Why did I run away from that? Did I think that I could get it, get the tiny mage in like another fight later? Probably not. But there's a few enemies here that actually appear in other dungeons if you don't get them. So let me uh, scroll up to my notes, double check. So that would be the uh, the zombie, the vile shell, killer fish, tiny mage, and alligator all appear elsewhere. If we don't find them here, but uh, Toadger and Gigantoad are both unique to this dungeon, so we have to actually go ahead and take them out. Unfortunately, we have precisely two Maiden's Kisses. One thing that I actually didn't even uh, realize until like midway through this playthrough is that uh, party members that can cast Toad but are inflicted by Toad can still cast Toad. They can't cast any other magic, I don't think, but they can definitely cast Toad. Also, we got a stronger blade for Cecil that we can use. I'm using this opportunity on the world map to get Hundlegs and Sandworm, which we missed when we were in the desert earlier. Fortunately, they are the uh, only two enemies we missed. Got them in, got them in one encounter. I thought it was going to take longer. Gotta watch out for these twister type attacks. It's like they only do like one damage for now, but in uh, in later dungeons, whenever you see a tornado, usually it means that you're probably going to get sent down to like single digit HP. It's typically how that stuff works. So don't get lulled into a false sense of security just because you know, you get hit by a twister here, and it doesn't do anything. I don't know, I feel like for some reason, you weren't able to cast Toad on yourself with enemy- or with characters inflicted with Toad in, like, other versions of the game. I haven't played every version of Final Fantasy IV. 
I've only played like uh, PlayStation, a little bit of DS, and uh, SNES. For this fight, you don't even have to actually have Tela or Rydia attack, just have them defend and just have Cecil attack. And then just turn on auto battle and just let Cecil win the fight. I'm pretty sure unique to Pixel Remaster, there is a lot of damage degradation from physical attacks to characters in the back row, regardless of if there's anyone in the front row. So Rydia and Tella, as long as they're defending, you know, they're not gonna take like any more than like 10 damage or something dumb like that. This fight is completely free. I guess Octomammoth is just like scripted to be weak against like darkness. Darkness element, which is pretty much every attack that Cecil's got, or Dark Knight Cecil has. Oh right, I forgot about the Game Boy Advance version. I did play that. That was actually how I first finished Final Fantasy IV. So the only versions of the game that I haven't completed yet are uh, PSP and DS, which I'd like to do someday. I'm not sure why I went into battles on this part of the world map here. Maybe I thought that I was going to fight like a tiny mage or something. But maybe it's like in the desert or something. Maybe my resource was wrong about the uh, tiny mages appearing in Domsion, but I never got them. Damsion? Damsion? Dalmatian. Get a load of Edward and his massive fucking unibrow. <laughs> you spoony bard! This is the power of the internet. Is if something memes and it has a positive effect. And they thought it was kind of bad before. They'll bring it back real tongue in cheek like.
Damn, Tella got that psycho strength, though. So I really, really like the soundtrack. But if you listen to this, this isn't a harp. You can hear the dude's strings, fingers sliding across the strings. This is a fucking guitar. Also, poor Edward just takes so much abuse from his from his uh, from his friends. You know, it's like you got ready to tell him to quit crying, quit crying, you little bitch. And Cecil just slaps the shit out of him. Hey, your girl just die. Uh, quit crying. Real ones don't cry. Guys, just not even allowed to grieve. Edward has a hovercraft. That's so cool. Yeah, no, spoken like people who only like Edward for his money. Antlion Cave. I actually don't remember how many treasure chests there were here. This yellow jelly is also weak to thunder. Pick up the spider silk here. Spider silk is actually very good against uh, certain uh, certain enemies. Most bosses actually are susceptible to slow, so it's actually like really helpful. Well, let's see, what enemies are here in the uh, Antlion Cave that are unique? Yellow Jelly, Basilisk, and Adamantoys. There's a couple of Adamantoys here. I have no idea why I ran away from these guys. Domovoy actually is an enemy that you encounter in a forced battle. In like two forced battles actually, so you don't actually have to go and fight a Domovoy here. Yeah, I was freaking autopiloting going after the treasure chests. I just like wasn't even thinking about killing the Adaman toyses. I could have been done with all this by now if only, if only I just killed those enemies.
yeah, while you're escaping enemies, uh, one important thing to remember is during the escape animation, make sure you turn on auto battle because it'll actually cut off a couple of seconds every time you escape. So we got all the treasure chests. Oh, I think I just like, I think I just exit this like the normal way. Oh, look at that, right. There's Adamant Toys and Basilisk in one fight. That would explain why I was running away. Well, that's handy. I uh, totally forgot that they appear in the same mob. Fucking pass, Carsey. Piece of shit. Always best to, by the way, set it up so Edward is hiding. just keep summoning Chocobo and have Edward hide and then just go auto battle and the fight will be over very fast. I believe that Counterhorn... Yeah, Counterhorn only happens whenever you attack with a physical attack, but with like a magic attack or a summon attack, it uh, actually will not counterattack. Lydia ran out of MP, so decided to stop for a moment, have her defend, and then just let Cecil finish the fight. I probably just should have used an emergency exit to get out of here, actually. Would have saved a couple minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I actually did use an emergency exit. Go me. Good job, Pass Carsey. You're fucking up less and less. But we're going to get rid of all of uh, Edward's equipment also, because Edward is uh, very useless for anything except running and hiding. I actually did miss an item here, but if you go down a tile and then just go around this way, like you can go down a tile without actually exiting to the world map. Yeah, so I missed uh, I missed one of these pots here, like that other pot on like the bottom right. For some reason, I didn't check it. I must have thought that I did, but yeah, it was like right there, past Carsey. Never mind, past Carsey. Fuck you, piece of shit. It's all right. It's only like a small detour anyway. I came back after I got the airship and I got it. Yeah, someone in chat was, like, drawing a parallel between Dempsey on Castle, Castle, and, uh, Figaro Castle from Final Fantasy VI. They actually are kind of similar, I guess. Because, yeah, you can just barely go out to the world map. Well, not go out to the world map, but go, like, one tile down and, like, explore the rest of the castle that way.
fiddly playing that stringed instrument that is in fact not a harp. Actually, someone brought up the point that it could be a mandolin or like a ukulele or something. No, it actually sounds maybe more like a mandolin. Yeah, I think we just have to like do auto battle here and the Sahagan dies after like two hits. Oh yeah, another thing in Pixel Remaster that is super handy is you can have a uh, you can have a mini map which shows you the locations of chests. So we're gonna put Rosa, Rydia, and Edward in the back row, and by putting Cecil in slot two since he's like our main attacker here, we actually don't need to have, we actually don't need to fight these cockatrices. I just kind of decide to go ahead and kill them anyway. I actually decided, yeah, no, I, actually I, it, it was kind of semi-necessary to do it because I wanted to get, I wanted to get, uh, get my levels up a little bit before this fight, this boss fight coming up. A couple of spirits here, by the way, don't fly spirit airlines, they suck.
Gridia learns Warp, which can teleport enemies out of a fight. Maybe I just decided to fight those cockatrices, those cockatrice, like, arbitrarily. No, 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 I'm definitely fighting something here. Assigning auto battle commands, all you have to do really is just go to that character, go to the character that you want to change the auto battle command for in particular. You don't have to like hit any of the other commands as they show up for any other menus. Because the way auto battle works is it just like is it just like repeats the last action that your character took. I guess I still did it anyway because I wasn't sure at the time I recorded this segment, like how this is supposed to work. Fire heal spirits. That's right, I want to protect. Because the bombs actually do uh, physical damage. So that's why that's why I wanted to level up was so Rosa could get up to level 12 and get protect. I also put uh, Edward in the front so that we could have him just hide. And then Yang would get put into the fifth slot and therefore be put into the back row automatically. one of the mandatory encounters where Domovoy appears. I don't actually know if you need to if you need to like kill the enemy for it to show up in the bestiary or what, but I still try to kill one of every enemy in this playthrough. Just to make absolutely sure and I mean it doesn't hurt to gain a little bit of levels anyway. So the mom bomb fight, uh, if you cast Protect, it lasts for the entire fight, so you just hit everyone. We'll have uh, Redia defend, we'll have Yang defend. Basically, we're just getting everyone ready for impact. It's after some amount of HP that... Uh, that bomb bomb will explode. I think defending actually even helped, but uh, we still want to have that protect up. We still want to have protect up so that we can actually get rid of all of the uh, the bombs and gray bombs without them without worrying about them taking anyone out. 
At this point, it kind of becomes a race against time. We just have uh, Rosa keep casting Cure. And uh, if Cecil is in the front row, he can actually like kill all the bombs in one shot. I think it's maybe after like a certain number of turns. But we're still going to keep casting Cure. Still got to make sure that we keep our HP as high as we can. Yeah, you can see like how much damage that did. I'm not, I'm not sure that Protect actually protects against the uh, self-destruct. I mostly just casted it to uh, mitigate the damage from the physical attacks so that we could focus on keeping HP up. So on the off chance, well, as it turns out, on the very good chance that uh, the self-destruct actually does ignore uh, defense measures put in place, such as protect and defend. It doesn't KO any of our party members. I would say that this is like the first boss fight that is actually that is actually like a threat. This whole segment was actually slightly annoying. But now Rosa has Cura, so we can just cast that once on everyone. Everyone's maxed out. The enemies on Mount Hobbs are uh, Spirit, Skeleton, Cockatrice, and Blood Bones. I'm not sure I actually found Blood Bones yet, but I probably, yeah, no, I gave I gave up on looking for Blood Bones because you can find pretty much all of these enemies in other places, especially Blood Bones at Mount Ordeals. On the way to Fabul, we need to find Gatlinger, which is uh, similar to Sword Rat, basically a hedgehog type enemy. There's our guy right there have Edward do row and then I also put uh, Yang back in the front row before the end of the segment because nothing is actually going to like nothing's actually gonna like kill Yang here that was all for just like the one Gatlinger <laughs> the Gatlingers actually do quite a bit of damage. And Fabul, there's like, I don't know, three, four mandatory encounters. We can get rid of all of uh, Rosa and Rydia's equipment. We don't really, really need to have anything on uh, Yang either, because Cecil can just wipe out everything.
So same as before. Take out the Baron Warrior, take out the Captain. Finished off the Baron Warrior before he uh, before he kills himself. Before he falls on his own sword. Hagen, Domovoy, and Leshy. Leshy we could have found an ant lion, but it appears in a mandatory encounter here, so it's not even a thing that is that is that is worthy of, you know, adding to like a checklist. Because again, mandatory encounters. Gargoyle is another enemy that shows up here. Do find it on Mount Hobbs, but don't need to fight any. to get Cecil's HP back up to max before the uh, before the cane fight rolls around. It's a mandatory loss, but you can still you can still complete the fight without Kane actually killing rather knocking out Cecil. Trying to put Cecil into the back row. I'm not really sure that it actually does anything.
So there's an item in the jar as soon as we exit the crystal room, and then there's three items over here, spider silk and demon shield being the two most notable. We actually get warped up to the top of the tower upon going to the inn, which also brings us closer to the other treasure chests in the castle. Just simply shift over here. Zeus's Wrath. Bomb fragments always good. And that's everything, so now we can head back to the world map. opportunity to remove everything and optimize Cecil's equipment because all these party members are gone.
Actually, Tiny Mage is right here. He just appears in uh, this particular mob of enemies. Yeah, you know what? I could have just actually not even bothered to fight sword rats and goblins and just done all this in one fight. That would have been pretty fucking swell if I'd thought about it. Actually, if I'd known about it. Well, I remember now. Fighting Zoo here was also unnecessary. I mean, I did get some levels, but uh, I mean, there is a there is that automatic zoo fight at the start of the game, and also later whenever I use fire sirens, excuse me, firens, sirens to summon uh, zoos and cockatrices later when trying to grind for uh, the cockatrice summon for Ridia, like close to the end of the game, you know, we'd fight zoo anyway. So for that particular fight, we got Bloodborne, Bloodborns. Bloodborne is a very good game. Uh, <laughs> we got Souls, and we got uh, we got Bloodbones, which uh, we didn't get when we went to Mount Ordeals. And it's actually uh, pretty handy to use uh, Porum and Palums like Twin Magic here for precisely that. Get a few levels here and there. All that's left is uh, Ghoul, Revenant, and Lilith, which we will get after Cecil transforms into a Paladin. But we're just doing all this to get the levels for now.
man, this was risky. I forgot that I needed to uh, that I needed to heal Porum before uh, going into this, and I didn't actually uh, I didn't actually give anyone any uh, ethers either. I probably could have gotten away with just using a bomb fragment or two, but. Comet saves bomb fragments, so whatever. So Bloodbones actually, uh, they can take damage from Cecil's Dark Sword. Also, Deathbringer actually has a chance to uh, proc death. So sometimes it can actually kill enemies here in one shot. Gotta make sure that we cast Asuna on Palum. I think we've gotten enough levels here to be able to survive the next fights. We don't even need like Palum, Porum, or Tella in order to be able to win the boss fight. The Revenant schools, zombies are among enemies on the checklist here. want to use some Echo Herbs or cast Asuna. But I didn't do that. I don't know. I just like kind of looked at it and just realized, you know, I don't really, I don't really need to do that. It's fine. You can actually just win this fight quite easily. these uh, bomb fragments here to get rid of these uh, skull nets, which uh, I don't think are even like semi-unique enemies here, they're just whatever. So Scarmiglione here also uh, we can just like straight up PS him with Cecil. And I guess just have Porum just like be healing everyone, probably. Scarmiglione just constantly counters with uh, 
just constantly counters with, like, Thunder after every attack. This gives the, uh... This gives the impression that it's, like, a tough boss somehow, but, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of bosses in Final Fantasy IV, in general, are, uh... Like, they have, like, a, they have, like, a lot of, like, counter-attack scripts. It's a little obnoxious sometimes. This is, like, one such example. I just wish he was undead in this form. So that I could just, like, throw an X-Potion and be done with the stupid fight. So this fight is just throw an elixir at Skarmiglione and he's dead. See? He's undead and elixirs heal and healing items cause damage against the undead, so... So this fight, we're just going to hit defend and just hit auto battle. It'll be over in like three turns.
so now that Tella has level 3 magic, we can actually kill, like, one mob of these revenants. Actually cast Fyra on them. Fyra is a lot more efficient. And it will give Cecil some pretty rapid levels. So Cecil's MP is actually not really good for much anything except for curing outside of battle. Otherwise, Cecil is just better off just like straight up attacking with his sword and soaking up damage for like his teammates. really necessary to spend money on ends. You can just heal with magic outside of a battle and just talk to a white chocobo a couple of times. Chocobo, giddy up! gonna buy all of Cecil's best gear just to kind of just to kind of you know get him a little bit up to date go ahead and optimize Tella Sell those stuffs, sell the extra armlets here, sell the leather garbs. Ice Rod is pretty useless, by the way. Like, even as, like, an item that you can use to, like, cast magic in battle, like, pretty much all of the, uh, all of the items that allow you to cast magic in battle, like, if it's, if it's just straight up damage, it's pretty worthless. If it casts, like, support magic, though, then it's very good. Things like the Sleep Sword and stuff like that. Oh, I should also note that uh, rods actually do not break whenever you use them in battle. 
So if you have an item that you can use in battle to cast magic over and over again, then it will always work. You can just keep using it however much you want. It's kind of a mechanic that I think they carried over from uh, Final Fantasy 1. So anyways, we're back in uh, Town of Baron. We're actually able to go through the town and collect all these treasure chests and whatnot. Because after this fight, we'll get the key to the Town of Baron, which will allow us to go into like shops and stuff. This fight is just, you know... Cast Zaga once on these dudes. They're dead. And then for Yang, the way this fight works, I'm not actually sure if it works this way on like other versions of the game. But all you gotta do is just hit defend and wait until a certain line of dialogue. Yang does have the potential to wipe out any of your party members. So he says, it's me. And then he says, hi, yeah. 
then he does another kick. And then we just have Telecure again. But it's after, you gotta wait until the ATB pauses for a moment. If you look at like Porum's ATB bar like a second ago, it paused for a moment, and Yang has to basically take one more turn after he goes, hi -ya! for you to be able to hit him and in the fight. another item in the pot on the way out and then another in that pot over there then we can use the Baron key in order to get into the equipment shop we'll just call it the equipment shop because it is a weapon shop and it is an armor shop while we're here we can buy a couple of ice claws which are uh, gonna come in super handy against uh, Kainatsu I think it's how how it's pronounced as well as uh, Rubicante. Wait, no, no, no. We don't fight Rubicante with Yang. Carsey, you fucking dingus. Also, go down the waterfall. At the end of the waterfall, there's two more items. And then on the way out of town, we go through the woods over here. And then there's four items. One. Two. Three. Did I miss one? I swear there were four items. No, I couldn't have missed any because I checked at the end of the game and I didn't miss I didn't miss any items. So maybe there were only three. Maybe I'm just crazy. But we're gonna give Yang the uh, the ice claws either way. So to start, we got Electrofish and we got Giga Skater. Those are going to be our first two enemies. As far as unique enemies that we got to kill in the barren waterway, we got Splasher, Hydra, Electrofish, Giga Skater, Death Shell, and Floodworm. And that's two out of six so far. There's Death Shell. I'm not sure that I actually found an uh, alligator when I went through underground waterway, but in either case, this mob has death shells, this mob has a Giga Skater, this mob has an alligator. 
we gotta do death shells anyway, so... No harm in killing an extra alligator. Next up we got Death Shell, Vile Shell, Splasher. Splasher is another, and after that it leaves Hydra and Floodworm. Splasher is ostensibly weak to Thunder. But then again, it's like all of Tella's magic will just absolutely kill the shit out of anything. We already killed we already killed that mob. So, well, not mob, but kill those two enemies, so we can just skip right past them. Use Cecil's MP to cure people. It's like, don't bother healing with Cecil. Like, using Cecil to heal. Unless it's outside the party. That's, like, the only time his MP is actually useful. Situationally speaking. Is to just allow yourself to save MP for like your other white mages and whatnot. There's our flood worm. Everything dies in one Thundaga. Another spider silk there. I definitely could have used more spider silk this playthrough. Nothing in this mob that we need to kill so we can run. I'd been forgetting to uh, turn on auto battle at the end of the segment. Or at the end of uh, escape sequences, sorry. Ethers are pretty good for Tella right about now. Because Tella only goes up to like 90 MP just to prevent players from like breaking the game by having. Uh, by having like 99 MP, therefore being able to cast Meteor. There's a glitch in the Super Nintendo version that allows you to like underflow Tella's MP to be able to cast Meteor as soon as you get it. Don't ask me how it works though. I haven't actually, uh, I haven't actually like tried it myself or done any research on it. This mob contains our final enemy. Hydra. Please no Hydras in chat. Baron Guard, we already uh, we already killed Baron Guards in like the force battle with Yang earlier. So it was kind of dumb of me to like fight these guys, especially because they can cast mini. Treasure chest over here contains an ether. Just using one more to keep Tella's MP up. Although I didn't actually really need to use one, I could have just used a tent. I didn't use very many tents this playthrough. I should have used more. Moving 
around here, you can actually see this chest on the mini-map. Right, I actually used a tent here before using a save. There's kind of no point in me using that ether there. Whatever, hindsight's 2020. Blame it on past Carsey. Piece of shit. So Bygen, pretty simple fight. We're not going to crutch on uh, using any magic on Bygen himself. But we just got to take out the uh, left arm. I'm gonna cast haste on uh, Yang and Cecil. And we gotta take out the, uh, well, not take out the right arm, but we have to lower the HP pretty significantly. The right arm can inflict, uh, can inflict sap, which, you know, constantly ticks down HP like every second. So I got it, got it down to around like 400, like 400 damage done to it. And after casting uh, Haste on Cecil and Yang, cast Protect. I think that was enough to actually, like, move on to Bygen. But basically, uh, you gotta make sure that the right arm's health is low. Before you, uh, before you kill Bygen proper, because if you leave the uh, right arm alive and it has high high HP, then it'll use self destruct. And when it uses self destruct, it'll do damage that is uh, equivocal to the amount of remaining HP that it has. So the lower the HP, the less likely that it's actually going to take out anyone in your party as long as you keep your HP up. You just gotta make sure that uh, your party's HP is still up and that the right arm's uh, HP is like in the double digits. And I'm pretty sure I did exactly enough for its HP to be in the double digits at this point. So now I'm having Tella and Palum defend, I'm having Porum use Cura every turn and just keeping auto battle on until uh, Bygen is defeated. With any luck, you know, you can you can take out the right arm before it uses self-destruct, but it was already under haste. And it only had like 12 HP left, so it only did 12 damage to Porum. So we'll hit this switch over here, and that'll take us to 
one of Baron's secret treasure rooms. I probably could have actually, like, gotten all these maybe at the start of the game. No, uh, maybe not. Either way, the castle's empty, so... Get all the goodies. We have to go down and get the other goodies here. Before we can get that treasure chest. We can go up. There's six pots. Two chests. So we got everything, 18 chests, two items. We can't get the Odin summon yet, not until we get Rydia. So we have to basically come back from the uh, the underworld in order to do that. After getting all the chests, I decided to run back to the save point in the barren waterway. But not before going to Cecil's room to s rest up a little bit. It would have certainly been more time efficient to just use a tent. Should have just done that. Because basically it's like after this point in the game, you know, you're not really hurting for money. So for Kainatsu, what we do is, uh, whenever Kainatsu is uh, not enveloped in water, he's weak to ice. But whenever waves start to gather around him, he's weak to thunder. So we're just going to start with uh, attacking with Yang, and then we'll use haste on both Cecil and Yang. So there's that, there's them waves. We'll have Palom cast Thundara. Gets rid of the waves. While Tella and Porum are still buffing everyone. We're gonna have, uh, we're just gonna have Palom get rid of the waves so it doesn't cast Tidal Wave. The casting Berserk actually uh, increases a character's attack power by, uh, I think it's like, what, 50% or something like that? And it's like, if you were just only going to have Cecil or Yang just attack the whole time anyway, you know, you might as well just put them under Berserk.
But yeah, don't go for the Thundaga, because if you do, it's just going to be a waste of time, and Kanyatsu will probably get off like a, like a tidal wave or something. Thundaga takes way too long to cast. I'm actually not sure like uh, how long it takes to cast Thundaga, like if it's based on uh, if it's based on like magic or something. Like based on a specific stat, the higher it is, the lower the cast time is.
So this segment is basically going to be getting a lot of treasure. I'm going to start by using the inn over here. Because we actually need to be up to full HP, MP. We're going to make a little detour to Eblon Castle. chests over here and another chest over here then we got to go back into the town of mist there's a few uh, hidden items in the grass bomb fragments mostly gee I wonder where those came from hit up Basidia for the item shop because there's actually high potions here. I just try to take it down to like 95 or so because then that way uh, whenever I pick up a uh, high potion from the treasure chest it doesn't tell me that I can't pick it up because I have too many. I want to make sure that we got around like 20 of each of the uh, status curing items that we can get here. They're good because they save MP, so totally worth it. Eblon Castle doesn't have any like random enemy encounters, but uh, there are a lot of monsters in boxes, a lot of monsters in chests. So we go down here, we can pick up a cottage, maiden's kiss, and a gold needle. And then go to the other side here. Unicorn horn, alarm clock. Go through this hidden wall over here. There's a lot of hidden walls in this castle. And with that done, we can start exploring the left tower. We want to explore the left tower first because the right tower has like a uh, a passage that forces you to exit the castle. Go down there and get the bomb core. There's a hidden uh, path over here to get a thousand gil and a mute arrow. We could go down and uh, if you go towards the door, it's like one square above the door. You get over here, here's our first monster in a chest. So we got four sculptures and a steel golem. We want to go ahead and use uh, bomb fragments in order to take out the sculptures. We'll just have Tella and Sid use those. And then once those are done, we'll just have Cecil and uh, Yang keep attacking. As you can see, it's vulnerable to ice, so I tried using Antarctic Wind. Antarctic Wind is basically useless, as you can see. But we're not going to waste any of uh, Tela's MP to cast uh, Lazara. We actually need much MP as we can hold on to. Meanwhile, I'll just show off some of these items. Okay, maybe an Arctic Wind is useful, but only for this fight. Just only for this particular fight. Just because it does like 200 damage or so. And I mean, the Steel Golem, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It just has a bunch of HP. We're trying to save Tella's MP for like the fights where we actually need it. Cecil to heal up the party. That's it for the left tower. Now we're going to the right tower.
Take this secret passage over here, get the Coral Whisker. I don't remember what that does. Hit the switch over here. There's emergency exit, high potion. Hermes shoes. Then we take this secret passage over here. And uh, there's monsters over here. So we got two corals and a Lamia. So corals have 600 HP. And uh, we got to take them out one at a time. Because the problem is if you do like less than 600 HP, then blaster! And uh, Blaster will just... Blaster has a chance of, like, just randomly killing a party member. So... It's best to just go ahead and uh, focus all of your... You know, just, 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 just use your single strongest attack that you can use against the Corels so they don't use Blaster and just fucking own you. This is basically why I saved my MP, was just to use Thundaga on these guys so they wouldn't get blastered. Cecil also learns teleport here, which is handy. There's a high potion, we can drop down the hole, get the silver hourglass, and then when we go down again, and this will take us to the uh, area exit. Meanwhile, just gonna heal up. There's an ether on Tella. Another ether, another ether. Here's our next monster box. There's three mad ogres here. So we gotta cast Protect on everyone. And then we have to use the, uh, the Sleep Blade. Right, we picked up Sleep Blade after one of the monster in a box encounters. But if you use Sleep Blade as an item, this can even be done while it's equipped. Then you'll put a bunch of the ogres to sleep. Just have Cecil keep using Sleep Blade. And then it'll allow us to get enough time to pick ourselves back up. Basically, we just want to start uh, casting like a uh, break on these guys while they're asleep. I figured out the casting break is actually a lot more efficient than like trying to cast any uh, any damage magic. It seems like uh, break has like the same percentage of uh, like the same percentage chance of working, regardless of whether you target one or target multiple. But, even, but if there's only one enemy, then it only def that it already defaults to just like one enemy, so you don't have to switch it back to individual enemy. Fortunately, but we're still gonna keep casting. Break till they're all dead. Silver apple is good. I prefer to hold all of like my silver apples and my gold apples until the finalized party. Actually, I just like to dump them all on Rydia. So that's done. We can now scroll the map, make a quick pit stop in uh, Fobble really quick because there's a Chocobo Forest here. This Chocobo Forest has Gashel Greens. And we can just use the uh, white chocobo to restore our MP really quick. <laughs> We're 
There's another Chocobo forest over here, kind of hidden. I have really, really bad short-term memory, so I guess I forgot that I just talked to a white Chocobo. I just wanted to make absolutely sure. Yeah, careful, it puts us one space up above the uh, level transition trigger. So we got Hell Needles and uh, we got another Blaster Cat. This is... Uh, This is one of the unique enemies, or the enemies that is unique to the world map in the Troya area is these Hell Needles. I forget where else you can encounter Kate sets. Oh, actually you can encounter them in Magnetic Cave. But they're not, uh, Kate sets are not totally unique to Troya. You can also encounter them in Magnetic Cave. I just decided to go ahead and get it done. Don't, 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 uh, don't, don't use the inn here. Just go back to the Chocobo Forest and use a white Chocobo. It's a lot better that way. We take the secret passage back here. There's, uh, four items. And that's all the items that we pick up here. There's a bunch in Troya Castle, but we can't uh, we can't get everything until after we're done with the Magnetic Cave. So we're just gonna go directly to talk with uh, Edward and get the Twin Harp, and that's it. I don't know if you can actually skip the Twin Harp here or not in the uh, Pixel Remaster. I don't know if it's required before you actually go to the Magnetic Cave, because if I recall correctly, you don't even need to talk to Edward in like previous ports. Pretty much all of uh, Final Fantasy IV's dialogue writing boils down to... Oh hey, look, it's character A. Characters B, C, and D are no longer in the party. What happened? Oh, they're gone? Okay. Here's these new party members. We're going to introduce them. And here's what we're doing right now. Here's more exposition. What do we have to do for the next area? It's kind of like this over and over again. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. So we got another Hell Needle and uh, some Treants over here. Treants are uh, actually unique to this area. Same with the Hell Needles. I didn't carefully chart out like any of the enemy encounters. Like any of the enemy mob encounters. Like 
enemy mob sets. So I could have just like waited until I got an encounter like this to actually like kill all of them. It probably would have been better. But there's also Death Flower. Which you gotta watch out for. Some Gasol Greens over here. There's three items here. This is actually the biggest of the Chocobo Forests. Two more Gasol Greens. We use, uh, you can use Cecil, you can use Tella to heal, it doesn't matter. So yeah, the Death Flower. There was one more Death Flower that I could have uh, killed in Troya, but I decided to just wait until like very late game to just like kind of mop up anything that I missed. So while we're here, we gotta equip uh, the crossbow and holy arrow because those don't count as like metallic items. I don't remember if the light helm actually counted as like metal, but we have to like get rid of uh, get rid of anything that looks or sounds like it is a metallic item. I think the light helm might have been metallic. But yeah, you might remember here if you get into a uh... oh yep, it was certainly metallic, so we got to get rid of it. Yeah, poor Cecil. Probably has his head weighed directly to the ground. So uh, there's another uh, another difference in this version. I'm not actually sure like where it uh, where it starts, like which version it starts with. But uh, if you equip arrows, they actually do not deplete like they do in uh, the SNES and PlayStation versions. They might deplete in the Game Boy Advance version. I actually don't remember. If that's inaccurate, I'm sorry. I only beat the uh, Game Boy Advance version once, like a very, very long time ago. And that was like before I started like speedrunning. So I didn't like actually pay attention to like little subtleties like that. I was just more concerned with, you know, playing the game like everyone else does. Get all your characters to max level, try to get everything in the game and Never think about the video game again, you know? So we got Ogres, we got Kate Sits. Basically the arrows are They do about they do about similar damage. As like Cecil's sword would do otherwise. Pretty sure we can still use Sleep Blade as an item as well, just in case we want to like put enemies to sleep or something. But none of these enemies are are like particularly particularly tough either. We got a Twin Snake and we got Cave Naga. Uh, the enemies that we need to defeat in the Magnetic Cave are Twin Snake, Kate Sith, Draculady, Cave Naga, Mind Flayer, Cave Bat, and Ogre. Actually, I can go ahead and delete Mind Flayer off of that list. Because Mind Flayer is just an enemy that, you know, you have to kill over and over again in order to get a summon anyway. But we're not going to even bother farming any Mind Flayers until after we've got Sirens. So that we can, like, only fight Mind Flayers and directly Mind Flayers over and over and over again in order to, like, make the grinding for, like, the Mind Flayer summon more efficient. Pretty much every single, uh, summon that you keep defeating enemies over and over and over again for to get is completely useless anyway. I I don't know, I just I just always thought it was kind of dumb. But they actually made an achievement 
for it. You know, they, they, they've re-included the enemies. Maybe they just thought that it would be weird to just not to. But in any case, yeah, just don't worry about Mind Flayer for now. So the six enemies that we should be getting are Twin Snake, Kate Sith, Draculady, Cave Naga, Cave Bat, and Ogre. come back for the Mind Flayers when we were able to buy Sirens, which is something you can only do in the Pixel Remaster, by the way. Just one of the little uh, quality of life improvements. Let's just put it this way. I would rather... I would rather do 100% in Pixel Remaster and never do 100% Final Fantasy IV in any other version of the game, just simply because it makes the grinding for like certain things like Pink Tails and Summons a lot easier. And it's like putting yourself through all that, putting yourself through all that trouble for just like, you know, so many like RNG drops is just, it's like, it's like, it's like, why waste, why waste your, why waste your life on it? Just don't, just don't bother. We got Dracula, Draculady, Draculady looking kawaii as fuck. girl likes to do it on the ceiling and she likes to drink your blood she ain't into some freaky shit that's Draculady Might have just started like autopiloting after a period of time. Yeah, I definitely started autopiloting. Probably because these guys actually have like really, really good, uh, Like, really, really good EXP. Oh, but also because I guess I wanted to fight a Mind Flayer for some reason. At this point, I have certainly killed all of the enemies that I'm going to kill in this dungeon. So we can move on to fighting the Dark Elf. It basically looks like a cleaned up uh, Astos from Final Fantasy 1. By the way, this is a uh, scripted loss. You can't do anything about it. So that's not going to count against us. You're forced to lose here.
it's okay, Dark Elf. I hate this dude's fake guitar music too. But now we can just hit optimal and everything. He's pretty weak to uh, any weapon that has like metal. Really, it's just Cecil's sword. is about the only thing that you actually have to worry about for obvious reasons. Remember how I said earlier that uh, tornado attacks actually do render you down to like a single digit HP? This is what I'm talking about. And we let it lure us into a false sense of security at the start of the game. So we're trying to do haste on Cecil and Yang. Uh, the Dark Elf turned uh, Tella into, a into an old gray pig. Uh, Tella can actually cast Pig on himself in order to reverse the effect. But it's like at this point, you know, you probably don't even need to worry about having Tella not be a pig. Man, here I am looking so hard for a way to for a way to make Tella not a pig. When I should have been looking in the magic menu. Pass Carsey, please. Oh, actually, yeah, I forgot that I actually needed to have control of a particular party member in order to use Bacchus's cider. Now these dudes are just gonna attack automatically. Basically the fight is the fight is gonna be over. All you gotta do is just keep your HP up and you're good. And that's when I figured out you could cast a Suna on yourself while you were a pig. <laughs> Someone in chat just said. Dark Elf is a Pitchfork reviewer. I mean, it's true. Maybe they, maybe, maybe Dark Elf is as mad as I was. That Edward's theme isn't played by, a, isn't played with a real harp, and is played with like a fretted string instrument instead. Because <laughs> you can hear the dude's fingers sliding on the fretboard. The magic is ruined, Uematsu. The magic is fucking over. Yeah, we have to actually exit out of the crystal room before we can teleport out. Whenever you get back on the black chocobo, it automatically flies back to the chocobo forest where we found it. Probably a good thing, all things considered, because then it forces you to go back to where the airship is. It's the only place where you can get a black chocobo. And we'll just giddy up. Back to Troya. But now we can also get all of the uh, treasure chests in Troya after this dialogue is done.
headed to the right. We can go down these uh, these stairs over here. Talk to the dancer over here. She'll let us in. And there is a lot of treasure chests to pick up. And I mean a lot of treasure chests. There's a lot of goodies in here. A lot of good goodies. There's money, there's arrows, there's healing items. Yeah, this is such a good haul. I wish there was a glitch to just let me pick these up forever. Bacchus' cider over here. Ultimately, you know, it's like you're going to rely on, like, your white mages to cast Berserk on your uh, frontline attackers. But in the event that they can't cast Berserk for whatever reason, like, you know, Pig, Mute, something like that, and it would just seem a little more efficient to just go ahead and cast Berserk on yourself. And that's what Bacchus' Cider is good for, especially for Cecil. It feels like Cecil is pretty, like, middle of the road, unless he's under, uh, Berserk. As far as, like, damage goes. spot check to make sure we got our optimal gear on because the enemies in this dungeon can fuck you up if you're not careful. So in the Tower of Zot, we have quite a few enemies actually. They're all unique to the area. We got Purple Bavara, uh, Puppet, Sorceress, Black Knight, Centaur Knight, Gremlin, Soldieress, Puppeteer, Ice Lizard, Cold Beast, and Hell Turtle. And uh, so far we're Getting rid of uh, Cold Beast and uh, Cold Beast and Centaur Knight. Quick map check over here just to see how to get going in as few tiles as possible. I actually did backtrack in order to uh, get some enemies that I missed. I think this might be another dungeon where I just like didn't run and I just like fought everything for the EXP. Purple Babara and Ice Lizard. Yeah, generally these uh generally they the uh the unique enemies come in like pairs of two. So we got our Centaur Knights, our Ice Lizards, our Purple Babaras, and our Cold Beasts. Takes us down to the fiery hound over here. We could actually get that in the Tower of Babel later, but it's worth killing this one to get the uh, the fire sword. Well, actually, wait, no, that was, a, that was a freaking treasure chest encounter. I wasn't paying attention. My bad. Of 
black knights over here. Five enemies left now, but uh, Puppeteer and Puppet, I think, can only be encountered at like the start of the dungeon. I'll probably remember a little better once uh, commentary recording gets to that, which should be the next segment. Ice Lizard and Gremlin. It's another straight up DPS fest. So all that's left is Puppet, Sorceress, Soldieress, and Puppeteer. There's a lot of good weapons in Tower of Zot though. I don't actually need to fight any of these guys, but I decided to just go ahead and wax them all anyway. Because the jellies, they all come in a variety pack. And some are fruitier than the others. There's our soldieress and sorceress there. Row change. Quick high potion on Tella. So all that's left now is Puppeteer and Puppet, which we gotta go all the way back to the start of the dungeon in order to get. But not until the uh, not until the next wait a minute. Is this everything? Yeah, let me check the list again. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh yeah, it sure as shit is. That's the uh, that's the whole bestiary here. But why do I feel like I went all the way back to the start of the dungeon? Maybe I didn't review the footage of this video before I went and I did the next one. So I thought I missed an enemy. Oops. And I could have very easily made this whole video 30 minutes shorter, huh? Just on like certain routing mistakes alone. It's like it ain't a speed run. But I still want to try and make sure that, you know... I don't do anything that causes me to waste like... A bunch of minutes either. Like tens upon tens of minutes. Because that's basically my goal whenever I record a walkthrough is to, you know, just try just try to keep it in like a uh, in like a ballpark good amount of time. And not waste like too much time. Try not to be too overly conscious. Whatever. No use beating myself up over it.
So Sandy, Cindy, and Mindy, total gimmick fight. We're going to start by taking out Cindy, who's basically just there for the Mega Sisters to cast Reflect on. She doesn't really do much anything except attack uselessly. But you still have to kill them in like a certain order. Because one of them can revive the others. Can you believe I used to die on this boss when I was a kid? For some weird reason, they are the strongest summon in Final Fantasy X. Probably not the strongest summon. I don't know. Summons weren't really that good for anything in Final Fantasy X other than, like, getting them into battle using their overdrive and then the boss just, like, taking them out of the equation in one shot. I think, like, the annoying thing about this fight is just the way they cast Reflect so goddamn much. After Cindy goes down, the rest of the fight falls pretty easy. It's like you don't even need to worry about casting Berserk. Just go auto-battle. Auto Oh, I guess I didn't do any backtracking after all. Sweet. I hope I didn't do any backtracking.
Oh, it. yep. I definitely did do backtracking. What the hell for? Did I actually forget an enemy? Either way, now that Tella is gone, we can actually use this opportunity to gain some levels. So I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. Pretty much everyone here is physical attackers. On this floor, we gotta make sure that we take the, uh, the outer path, because if we go the inner path, we're just gonna keep zigzagging and getting into enemy encounters. It's a trap. Don't do it. You can see it on the mini-map. Is there another reason that I was here? No, no, I definitely backtracked in order to kill a specific enemy that I thought I missed. Which enemy was it? I may never know. But yeah, I don't know. I just I didn't really have to do this. I could have actually waited until the uh, Ruby Conte grinding segment segments, I should say, in order to level. Oh, you know what? It was the Hell Turtles. I actually did miss the Hell Turtles. My bad. So I did miss something. take any risks with Barbarisha. Well, you know, you don't even really need much. You don't really need to do much against Barbarisha other than make sure your HP is like above the single digits. Because Barbarisha's attack pattern is like set. It's like a completely set pattern.
get a full heal at the start of the next segment. As soon as we talk to Kane, it'll lock us into fighting Barbarisha, which is why I didn't do it yet. God damn, those pixels need to get a room. Disgusting. Disgusting. So we're going to equip Rosa with the uh, the Great Bow and the Mute Arrow, but also we got to make sure that uh, Kane does not have the Blood Lance equipped. I fucked up and I equipped the Blood Lance here, so I guess you're about to see what it does, but basically because of the Blood Lance's uh, damage formula being tied directly into sacrificing HP in order to do extra damage, whenever you try to use Jump with the Blood Lance, Jump actually has zero effect. I don't know if that's like a bug or if they just like couldn't program anything for like the Blood Lance in this particular case. They probably just didn't want you to use the Blood Lance like willy nilly. I wanted you to be aware of when it was equipped. So yeah, Barbaricia turns herself into, turns herself into a tornado. And she casts Tornado, and she uses a singular Gradual Petrification attack. Uh, they might have changed Gradual Petrification in this as well, so that uh, Gradual Petrification actually uh, only gradually petrifies you whenever you are hit with a Gradual Petrification attack. I feel like in the other games, uh, Gradual Petrification just like petrified you more the more turns elapsed. In any case, I'm going to use Protect here. When uh, Kane's jump attack comes out, though, it's like even even though it like missed, quote unquote, it still took her out of Tornado. So all of Cecil's attacks are going to do more damage. probably about like right about here that I realized oh fuck I have the blood lance equipped so if you fuck this up yeah you can go into the menu and uh, unequip it
there it is. Again, Tornado. And then Ray, which is Gradual Petrification. Gradual Petrification has to hit like five times before it'll actually turn a character into stone. I do count uh, characters turning to stone as uh, as a um, as a death condition. But basically, the uh, the best way to deal with Barbarisha is to just like not worry about the petrification nearly as much as keeping your characters above, uh, like I think 200 HP maybe. I gotta actually see like how much damage her attacks do again. Maybe I just wasn't even aware of the Bloodlance completely uh, rendering jump useless at this point. Yeah, okay. If that's the case, then this is a very sloppy fight. Just don't have Bloodlance equipped whenever you go into this fight. Rosa is still good, still good damage, so definitely good to have her use aim in this fight. Jesus Christ, Rosa, you shot her right in the, right in her beehive. Okay, there it is. There you go, Pass Carsey. Come on, Wind Spear. Wind Spear, bro. There you go. Now does jump work? There it goes. Success. You did it, Pass Carsey. Great job, man.
I actually completely forgot about this uh, chocobo forest over here. This is actually a hidden chocobo forest. Nah, I lied. I actually like waited until now to go to this chocobo forest to see if anyone is still paying attention. Doing a quick map check. See if there's anything that we're missing. I still am missing that one pot. Damn Sion. I actually had no idea where the hidden item was here, so I just decided to go ahead and save. Fuck it. Oh hey, there's there's that Antarctic wind. Okay, yeah, that's the only item that you have to pick up in uh this town here. Otherwise this town is like pretty useless. There's a lot of uh there's a lot of vestigial environments and things in Final Fantasy IV. Like this whole town pretty useless beyond like plopping a mag a magma rock into in order to create a volcano. We just never come back here. It's basically here for lore. Oh man, what am I? What? Pass Carsey! Pass Carsey! No, stop! We were already here. Pass Carsey, please. Oh, I think I might have just done this in one take. Yeah, maybe I just like autopiloted. Just bad short term memory or something. Oops. I had to go back to Domsion in order to get this last pot over here, which has a holy arrow. We can make our way down to the underworld, which has some banging, some banging overworld music. A lot of dialogue this segment, but the bosses here are like not difficult, so it's good to make this its own segment and also pick up a lot of treasure along the way.
So Cal Cabrinas, uh, we're just gonna try to kill all of them before they reassemble. You can do that, but the thing is, if you kill the Calcobrinas before they uh, assemble into Calcobrina, the actual boss, then you won't be able to take that off on the bestiary. I still want to kill as many of them as possible just because of the amount of damage they're doing. Such a dumb, silly boss. Just keep doing damage to it, eventually it'll split up again. Might have been better to just have Kane keep jumping, actually. So every so often the game hitches. I don't know if that's like a Unity Engine thing or what. Yes, Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster is done in Unity. This first half of the fight is a scripted loss. There's nothing you can do about it. Basically, he'll uh, just one-hit kill everyone except Cecil. But it's still worth it to go ahead and cast uh, Haste on Cecil. So Golbez does summon the Shadow Dragon, because Golbez has the power to summon monsters. And uh, similarly to all of the uh, summoners in Mist, if the Shadow Dragon is destroyed, Golbez suffers very, very, very significant uh, loss of strength. So this is why Rydia comes in, kills the Shadow Dragon. Now we got Hermes Shoes. Well, I used it again a second time. There's no reason to. Before we continue the fight, though, I'm going to allow myself to use these Phoenix Downs. But if any of the characters get KO'd again, then i got to restart the fight.
unfortunately, Rose's Kiraga has like almost no time to cast. Yeah, look at all, all of Golbez's spells at this point. Because the Shadow Dragon got because the Shadow Dragon got killed, he's super weak. dies really fast. So with this all done, we're going to explore the castle now. Pick up all of the items and hidden items that we can get. Starting with this pot over here, 5,000 gil. We can go to the west tower with that particular staircase. Doing a quick spot check for uh, hidden items. Never seem to remember where they are, the hidden items. It's like chests are easy enough, but like... Which pot or which patch of grass has like a hidden item is always really tough. This is like all hidden passages and shit. We're gonna go to the right tower. Uh, there's a secret passage here, but oh, there's only like one thing. Just Bacchus's cider. Bacchus's cider, super super good. Berserk when we can't cast Berserk on any of our other characters. Dwarven axe go down. If we take the uh, the path in between these two counters over here, we can actually go over here. In the PS1 and SNES versions, there is a dev room Easter egg right there. It says 1991 dev room abandoned. 
because those people probably no longer work at Square Enix at the time that uh, Pixel Remaster was developed, so they just got rid of that whole dev room. The 1991 dev room. It's kind of sad, to be honest. It's like, why not keep the dev room? Because they were the original developers of the game. Pay some tribute, you know? These dudes spent a pretty significant portion of their lives developing this game. I mean, no matter how you cut it, spending like three, four years to develop a video game, it's a lot of fucking time, man. Especially one as prolific as Final Fantasy. Great Bow and Mute Arrow again, because Mute Arrow is still stronger than anything. We have most of our final party here, except for Edge. So we got goblin captains here. Uh, pretty sure those are an enemy that we encounter mandatorily after the uh, Dr. Luge boss fight. So I actually didn't even need to kill those. About the only... Uh, about the only enemies that are necessary to kill mandatory in the underworld are Bloodflower, Armadillo, Chrysalis, Hellflapper, Magma Tortoise, Gorgon, Gloomwing, Crawler, and Tarantula. And I just took out the Magma Tortoise and Armadillo just now. But a lot of the underworld enemies just kind of appear wherever, so... Still need to get Black Lizard, which can also appear in the Tower of Babel. But we went ahead and killed the Black Lizard here to cross that off the list. Man, this sucks. Once you get over to this screen, it's like it's like every like four steps. There's always like an exchange of fire. And it just makes trying to get to the castle really, really slow. The music in Tower of Babel is among my favorite tracks in the whole game. Oh, Magma Tortoise also shows up here as well. Here we got Security Eye. Security Eye here will summon a Chimera.
first half of uh, Tower of Babel. We have Ironback, Evil Doll, Medusa, Fiery Knight, Black Lizard, Sorcerer, and Ghost Knight. But I think Evil Doll and Puppeteer show up as uh, chest enemies. Stone Golem as well, being a chest enemy. Mystery Eggs can have, like, one of four different types of enemies, I think. Typically, like, dragons or lamias or something like that. Just gotta hit it with a weak attack. It'll hatch. The Black Lizards, you know, we already fought all of those. White Moose and Chimera over here. I don't remember if you can find White Moose on the moon or not. I think I think White Moose is a moon enemy. Let me double check. Oh, yeah. So I didn't even have to really do this encounter. But I kept I kept messing it up. should have stuck around and killed those fiery knights. It's Naga over here. I have no idea where I would have encountered another Oh, right, this was this was a treasure chest battle. It's 
so it is an enemy that appears on our route. All these ice weapons we have equipped basically just completely destroy golems. I think most golems are weak to ice or something. Security eye, I wait a moment to see what enemy comes out. Because I actually didn't properly chart out like what all enemies the security eyes would uh, would summon this area. So Barnabas and uh, Dr. Lugai, Dr. Lugi, we have to take out Barnabas first, and then Dr. Lugi will summon Barnabas Z, and we have to defeat Barnabas Z before he uses self-destruct. Race against time. This is kind of a joke battle. I'll show you why I'm feared. Yeah, this 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 dude's this dude's a fucking weeb. Go ahead and cast Berserk on Cecil. I think it's best to do just straight DPS on this fight. I don't remember if it's after a specific amount. Oh, okay, there it is. So after a specific amount of time when Dr. Lugi transforms into some weirdo fucking undead abomination. But 
but he can do like a bunch of status effects on us. We just like don't even really need to worry about it because after a while he'll just cast Panacea and just like heal everyone. It's after Flamethrower that he'll cast Panacea actually. But it doesn't matter because he's dead now. Oh, Rosa doesn't have haste yet. Okay. That's why it wasn't casting haste. So in a moment, we're no longer going to have Yang. So make sure to unequip Yang. Although I think one of the quality of life improvements in this game is that characters that leave your party get auto unequipped. But I still unequip anyway, just in case. Doesn't really matter. We're running away from everything, and the next mandatory battle is just going to be against Goblin Captains. Any enemy with Goblin in the name is never going to actually kill you. Except for Little Murderer. Because Little Murderer is a an asshole. He's trying to sell you his mixtape. That's why he's called Little Murderer. And Yang doesn't even need to have a weapon equipped. All, all having a weapon equipped does with Yang is just modify like his elementals. Otherwise his damage formula remains like exactly the same whether he's equipped with anything or not. Which is kind of cool about Yang. Man, I almost forgot to get the Fiery Knight on the way out. And that treasure chest too. So what enemies did I miss? first half of Tower of Babel. I don't think I missed anything, actually.
now we can pick up the hovercraft. Take it to Eblon. Drop the airship and uh, I'm going to do a few encounters on the overworld map here. Iron backs and black lizards. But more specifically, we need Morse, we need Rock Baby, and Rock. Could have used a siren here and summoned like rock and rock baby. Either way, it took a while for me to actually find rock and rock baby. because usually the rock and rock babies are the more common encounter. But this time I was just getting kind of screwed out. No encountering set enemies. There we go. Cave of Eblon has plenty of like treasure chests, but uh, the only enemy that you actually need to kill is Bloody Bat. Everything else can be encountered in treasure chests, or like in other places. Go ahead and do our rows, put Cecil and Kane in the front row, and Rosa and Riddy in the back. Although you can just as easily put Kane in the back row if you only ever want Kane to use jump. Which is a pretty uh, sound proposition because jump ignores um like jump ignores uh which row your character is in.
I'm going to take this opportunity to pick up some extra status items here. Just go up to like 30 or 40 of them. Although, truth be told, I don't even think I use them for the rest of the game. We definitely want crosses, though, because Curse will whittle down our ability to do damage. Like, it'll actually, like, hinder our damage output. There's a couple of hidden items in these pots over here. A couple of hidden potions. I think I just still decided to kill everything here because I wanted some levels. Wanted to try to get some levels while I could. Because the higher levels your party is, the higher level other party members that will join you will become. So leveling up now would mean that Edge will join us at a higher level. Hot Snake Lady. Passage is a bit tricky for that one. Get the shuriken. 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 Gotta work on Hatsalon. Very important. Anyway. But yeah, we want we want levels because Ruby Conte can use uh can use Inferno which will do like 4,000 damage to our party. So pretty soon, we're going to have to spend a couple of segments leveling up the Tower of Babel. But don't worry, I'll fast forward through all of those. Yeah, you really don't get a whole lot of EXP, unfortunately, while you're... Um, Like, when all of your characters are still alive. There's a hidden path over here. Steel Golem. Goes down pretty fast.
One more item there. And before moving into the Tower of Babel, which is a point of no return, I decided to make a save. So, um, I actually had to re-record this segment because I realized when I was in the middle of recording my commentary that, uh, for some reason this segment was missing, but fortunately I rebooted the game and noticed I still have my save file for this segment, so... If I am missing any enemies or chests for whatever reason, I do apologize. I shouldn't be missing any enemies in Tower of Babel specifically because I use this as a grind base, like a grinding area. So I would have had to have encountered every enemy at least once, just by the sheer virtue of like going up and down and like battling everything for like two hours. Like, it doesn't look like there is a single enemy I encountered that I just, like, wouldn't find on, like, any floor. Mad ogres over here. Just encounter them literally anytime. I like to use Mist Dragon on these guys. Just weakens them little by little. Does a pretty significant chunk of damage. Someone in chat asks, why are these ogres so mad? Well, you see... It's because they are ogres, only mad. That's why they are mad ogres. Or maybe they got rabies or something, I don't know.
Oh. So for this fight, literally all you have to do is defend. They only do like a little bit of damage to you. Eventually they will come to their senses and uh, realize that they have become horrible abominations. God damn, how sad. equip everyone except for Rosa. Put the Ice Lance back on Kane. And then use a tent. Basically the next several segments about uh, I don't know, let me do a quick check how much gameplay are going to be uh, grinding like two hours. I'll go over the uh, general battle strategy for the grinding, and then after that I'm just going to fast forward through these segments completely. Because obviously there's no point in like holding on to like segments where there's like a bunch of grinding, but if you really, really, really need to do a proof call on me or whatever just to make sure that I like didn't like have any of my characters KO'd off screen or whatever, then you can just watch the no commentary version. I actually didn't slow down any of the battles in the no commentary video. Because when it comes to the no commentary video, I'm just lazy. Any who's in, so Mad Ogre and Corel, you only you only want to use Kane's jump on the Corels, because that's the only attack that you have that is going to be quickly able to do like above 600 damage and you need to do above 600 damage in order to kill the Corel in one shot otherwise blaster and uh, blaster has a 50% chance of killing a party member we don't want that But also in this segment, you know, I basically, I basically defeat every 
enemy that uh, can be encountered in this area of Tower of Babel. Some enemies you can only encounter after the uh, after the boss fight with uh, Rubicante. So the Mad Ogre, we already got in a treasure chest. We can get balloons here as well. Uh, I think about the only enemy otherwise might be Grudger. That might be like unique to these floors. But uh, I encountered balloons here and I actually did fight those. And sometime during this segment, I actually did get the bomb summon, which uh, deals damage based on the difference between Rydia's current HP and max HP. But because Rydia has low HP anyway, it's, uh, it's a pretty worthless attack. Like it's not even the slightest bit broken. So about all there is to do is just be using jump on these corals and uh, just regularly attacking everything else. Although really, realistically, you could just like, you could just have Kane go ahead and attack with jump and do only jump and then just have everyone else defend and just go on auto battle. And it's probably a lot easier until you get to a point where uh, Cecil and Edge and Rosa can actually do above 600 damage in one hit to the Corels. That's basically as long as I kept grinding. And the balloons, yeah, the balloons are just, you know, attack them. The only thing that you actually need to remember about grinding in this area is just beat the Corels in one shot. And now you're about to see what happens if you don't. See? Blaster. Luckily, I got paralyzed that time. I didn't do 600 damage. If that Corel had actually killed Cecil, I would have had to reset. But I believe I just got insanely lucky and I got a... Uh, I got the bomb summon this segment. Or this battle, right? No, no, it's like the next battle. But I 100% got it this segment. And I equipped Ogre Killer too, huh? Like Ghost Knight and Sorcerer as well. I think Ghost Knight might actually be a unique enemy to Tower of Babel Overworld. Ghost Knight is just going to keep summoning these, or Sorcerer is just going to keep summoning these Ghost Knights over and over again. They're not good EXP, so there's really no point in just like letting the Sorcerer keep summoning enemies. It's not good grinding. I mean, the EXP does stack over and over again more you kill, so that means you don't have to exit the battle, but it also means that you have to pay attention and, and like, not kill the sorcerer. We're gonna keep Rose's MP up as well. Try to make that last as long as possible. Okay, so it was definitely in this fight that I got the bomb summon. I just, like, got lucky and got it in, like, two fights. And there's our grudger right there as well. Oh no, maybe it was one more fight. Yeah, because this segment is like seven minutes long. Yep, okay, one more fight. We definitely got it, definitely got it this time. I think it's something like a 0.05% uh, chance of dropping or something like that. There it is. And then it's like after I noticed that I got bomb, I was like walking around for a little bit and it's like, wait, wait. Holy crap, I got bomb. So I used it immediately, because otherwise it would have taken me hours to grind for it. And then it's like, oh, do I continue grinding, or... And then I just decided that it was a good idea to save. And I mean, it ain't a bad idea to save here, either. Because then it means I could fast forward through all the other segments, where, like, the sole purpose of those is grinding levels. 
and I at least, you know, mentioned what had to be done in order to be able to efficiently grind and, like, not have any of your characters die. So, after this save, fast forwarding. See you later. about level 50 now and I think I might have grinded a little too much might have made Rubiconte a little too easy I mostly just wanted to be able to survive his uh, his inferno attack but I suppose doing crazy DPS is actually probably a better strat than trying to like survive the attack so sure why not let's roll with that But I also equipped uh, some stuff to help with, like, magic defense. Or I was looking for things that could help with magic defense. By the way, uh, it's worth noting that the flame mail actually makes you weaker to flames. As does the flame shield. So, ideally, you should have the ice armor <laughs> equipped of all things in order to be able to survive flames. Don't ask me why it works that way, it just does. Armor made of flames is somehow weaker than, than flames. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway, we're going to cast uh, Berserk on Cecil first. And uh, while uh, Ruby Conte has uh, got his cloak open, you know, showing us his wing wang, we'll, uh, we'll cast Blizzard. He's got about like, what, 40k HP or something like that. As long as we do enough, uh, as long as we do enough damage to him, it's fine. Yeah, really, Ruby Conte is just a sex offender. That's why he's like, that's why he's like op constantly opening and closing his cloak. He's an exhibitionist. No, not really.
heading back to the save point. Just got the Ruby Conte fight out of the way. Just decided to do that so I could focus on figuring out like what uh, enemy mobs would actually give the last few bestiary entries for Tower of Battle. So from here, there's only two more enemies that I have to farm before we are done with Tower of Babel for good. Sorry, not farm. Uh, kill. And that would be the Lamia Matriarch and the Mithril Golem. The egg has a little more HP than I initially thought. This enemy formation brought to you by the movie Alien. Also, we got a Light Curtain out of that fight. Light Curtain is like very good against Bahamut later. Tower of Babel, no one can hear you grind. There it is. So we needed to uh, get a sorcerer to summon a mithril golem. It's about the only way we can find them big some bitches. There we go. That's every monster in the Tower of Babel. Nothing left. Just just run. Pick up treasure chests. I see blaster cats, I get my gun. Got to run our asses back to Dwarven Castle over here so that Sid can modify the ship and allow us to cross the lava.
So now we're doing Sylvan Cave. Sylvan Cave has quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of good treasure. We actually don't need to fight any enemies here. We can just run away from everything. Like there's not a single enemy that we have to like go out of our way to fight, which is uh, pretty nice. You know, so all we gotta do is just focus on the chests and routing the, uh, routing the scarier encounters. We're gonna start by going out and around, and then that'll take us to this part. There's like about two, three different junctions. But there's like two exits. You also gotta remember to cast float every time you, uh, come to a new floor because your float goes away for some reason. It stays in like other versions of the game, I'm almost 100% sure. But you gotta remember to keep casting floats so that you don't take uh, damage from the floor tiles. So go through the hidden wall and then go up into uh, B2. Fortunately, keeping your cursor on memory helps with this a lot. Going to ignore Mammon, going to ignore Malboro. Once we've come down to this side of like the Sylvan Cottage over here, we take this teleporter and all six of these chests have some pretty brutal encounters in them. We still want to cast a uh, float on everyone and then we'll just use potions. To just like heal everyone up. I find potions are really, like, not useful for anything more than, like, healing outside of battle. But only when you're out of MP from Cecil. Anyway, so Evil Dreamer, uh, we can just cast Break. Or sorry, Quake, not Break. Break is right next to Quake. So we'll just start, like, killing these enemies while we're waiting for, uh, Rydia's, uh, Quake to queue up.
White Fang is just a singular holy attack. Okay, so Malboro, we just have to try to attack them as quickly and as aggressively as we can. This does have the potential to wipe everyone. But fortunately, Bad Breath only targets uh, one character at a time. So really, fighting Malboros is not that bad in Final Fantasy IV. It's only in like the later Final Fantasies when they can cast Bad Breath on your entire party that they're just like fucking broken as shit. All we gotta do is cast Asuna once and Cecil is fine. Because we got the Avenger, Cecil will be an auto berserk until the uh, next sword we get. So he's, uh, he's pretty strong, pretty strong now. Got our Mammons in this encounter here as well. Oh man, he cast Berserk on us. How dare he? Of course, we're going to have our Quake just queued up. Should kill everything. Yep, there it goes. Beautiful. Red Fang. Malboro Ambush in Final Fantasy 2 is basically game over. I don't actually recall fighting Malboros in Final Fantasy 2. Like original Final Fantasy 2, not SNES Final Fantasy 2. Which is this game. That sidetracked was talking to chat for a moment. But it was a uh, it was an interesting bit of conversation to muse about. It's just like how obnoxious Malboro is in like other Final Fantasy games, but he's like pretty weak in Final Fantasy IV. I don't remember how bad Malboros are in Final Fantasy V, but Final Fantasy V is a pretty brutal video game. So I could see Malboros being quite awful in Final Fantasy V. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there, huh? So now we've gotten that half of the dungeon. Let's, uh... Man, I'd totally forgotten how to get that chest, but I have to do it going down and then up. Oh yeah, there's also a save point here. That symbol, by the way, that triangle, I thought it would teleport me out of the dungeon, but it's actually a save point. In order to get that chest, just through a hidden wall, basically any time that, you know, you see a chest but you can't get to it, it's probably a hidden wall. going to upgrade Rosa's equipment a little bit. Equipping the Elven Bow seemed to be good enough. Cottage and a thousand gill. Going down here. We picked up that chest on the other side before. A lot of goodies over here. And it should just be going up another set of stairs here, really close by. Otherwise, these, these dungeons are pretty linear. Now we go down the stairs, and then we go up, and then down those stairs over there. But before we do that, there's another hidden wall over here. 
Gosh golly, how do we get over here? I don't know. Probably bump across the wall or something. Definitely better to just reserve Rose's MP pool for fighting other enemies. So Tiny Toad and Bogwitch is just... We'll uh, cast Quake. Provided it doesn't turn Rydia into a Toad. Mage Masher is a pretty good dagger for Rydia. Not that we ever have Rydia attack with a weapon. So Yang is over here, uh, we can go back to the overworld, pick up a frying pan from uh, Yang's wife, just smack him upside the head. It'll also give us a knife. By the way, when you come back to this dungeon after the Tower of Babel, you can check the bookshelf over there and get a grimoire, and that's basically the last item that you're missing from this area. Aside from uh, the Sylvan the self-summon. But in either case, you have to return to the overworld map before you can get self. I don't even remember what self does. So here's our, uh... Here's our other dungeon. We're about to get a lot of bosses and a lot of summons. By the way, Q Flora's Lava Jokes. But here we actually do have to pay attention to what enemies we have to kill. We've got Evil Bat, Screamer, King Naga, Miss Vamp, Yellow Dragon, Chimera Brain. Oh wait, no no no, sorry, that's 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 wrong. That's the next dungeon. Uh it's Belphegor, Bloody Eye, Warrior, Mini Satana, Summoner, Arachne, and Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragon is different from Yellow Dragon, by the way. But so far we got Warrior and Mini Satana. Summoner does have a chance to summon Thunder Dragon. Or it could just summon something as fundamentally useless as a goblin. But either way, once once a, once you have confirmed that a summoner type enemy summons something, it is only ever going to summon that particular enemy. So because it only summons goblins, forget it. We'll just try our luck with another with another one. I decided to equip the ogre killer here so that we don't accidentally kill summoners. Because otherwise Cecil being in Berserk would basically just cause him to just randomly kill a summoner. There's our Thunder Dragon. We got a summoner that summoned a Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragons, you know, we can just DPS them to death. It's fine. Also, Rosa learned Holy here. That's uh, kind of handy. I mean, Holy in itself is really not a great trade-off. We would rather save Rosa's, like, MP for, uh... For, like, curing party during boss fights. But, uh, I mean, Holy is good for, um... If you're, like, grinding, like, really tough enemy mobs. Like, say, for instance, Pink Puffs. Like, Holy is actually very good for Pink Puffs. Because then you can just, like, use... Uh, Meteor, you can use Holy, and you can just keep attacking them. 
and then just use Cecil to heal outside the party, or outside of battle, and you're good. So we got Arachne. What else is missing? At this point, we're missing Belphegor and Bloody Eye. I don't think Summoner summons either of those. We got a King Naga. We already encountered that. In order to get these three treasure chests over here, there is a path to the left. We get Kikuchi Manji here. Also, I encountered Bloody Eye, so all that's left is Belphegor. Monster encounter here, it's just all warriors. Let's cast Quake on all of them. The defender has uh, slightly more. Uh, attack power than the Avenger, but the Avenger does have that uh, that plus 50% attack multiplier that comes from being auto berserk. Either way, we got all the treasure, but uh, I decided to come back later to get uh, Belphegor. In order to get that other treasure, we just gotta go down and up. These teleporters function as stairs. There's our rat tail, which is necessary for getting the Sword of Legend achievement. I actually should have waited until after the boss fights to come and get these chests. But I mean, we got Yoichi's bow and Yoichi's arrow, even though Rosa isn't actually going to use them in the next fight. Also restock on any uh, amenities that we are missing. Remedies are super handy. I decided to just go ahead and get 20 of those. But we're at a we're at a crazy overabundance of gill. I almost didn't stay at the end for 12. 100 gil on principle, but then again, I just realized, you know, I have a crazy amount of gil, and it wouldn't kill me to use it. This is how late stage capitalists think. With money that is suffering to some. can be spent willy-nilly. No fucks given. So we're going to go ahead and fight Ashura. I, I don't like that poison axe. Let me try this again.
I didn't actually remember if equipping uh, Defender actually, uh, or equipping any sword actually made it so that you couldn't uh, use jump. I just sort of assumed. Fight, casting haste on Cecil. And I just decided to have Cecil use a uh, defender on everyone. Because if you use defender as an item, it casts protect on everyone. I'm sure I can use physical attacks. So it just helps to kind of nerf that damage a little bit. have Edge just do regular attacks with his Kikuchi Manji and uh, Moon Ring Blades. He'll cast Berserk on Cecil. Just have Cecil do whatever. I'll have Rosa focus on buffing because Ashura is not really is not really strong. Gotta keep attacking. Basically, Ashura just tries to counterattack every time. We're gonna cast Berserk on Edge, though. So don't even worry about that Kiraga. It's just more of an obnoxious waste of a turn to deplete that HP more than anything else. Remember if she counters with Reflect whenever we cast uh, magic on her or not? Magic on her or not? There we go. The next fight with Leviathan is just a straight up DPS check. It's like even though we never use Leviathan, you know, might as well, might as well get it. Because achievements. Going back to the inn and resting up. But also moving around really quickly to see if there's any, uh, anything I missed. There's some more uh, grimoires that you can pick up around here, but again, not until you uh, are done with the Giant of Babel. So we gotta come back here to pick those up. Which is fine and dandy, I mean. I gotta come back and get Belphegor anyway. It probably would have been better to wait until after the uh, Giant of Babel to do this area and the sealed cave. Because there's nothing like fundamentally useful here that can be gotten for any, either the sealed cave or the, uh, sorry, the sylph cave, sylph cave. I was talking sylph cave. Whatever, the two optional dungeons probably would have been better to do later. Anyway, so we're doing Leviathan now. And Leviathan is just a straight-up DPS check. So we'll start by casting Shell. 
in order to see if we can't absorb some of that, uh... Let's see if we can't absorb some of that, uh... Damage from like tidal wave whenever it happens. I have edge cast blitz, but you know it's really not a particularly useful magic spell. Blitz. I'd say Riddy is Thundaga is probably going to be like the the big the big DPS for this fight. Still fuck us up. He doesn't cast Reflect or Shell or anything on himself. And you can see he just like does a stupid amount of damage. Or like Thundaga just does like stupid amount of damage. It's got like Leviathan's got about like what 50k HP or something like that. So it'll go down really fast. I'll just have Rosa keep casting haste. Cast Berserk. And then about at this point is when we want to start casting Kiraja, but it doesn't matter. Boss is dead. nice things about Final Fantasy 4 is that you can you can go through like pretty much every boss fight and just like not ever have to grind. Except for maybe like at the end of the game. You do need a you do need like a few levels for Zeramus. That's everything for now, so we're gonna go down this way and into the hidden tile over here. And then go down to this one, which will teleport us back to the world map. Cave of Summons is good. The Village of Summons is... Still, like, one item missing. Land of Summons. Five treasures here, just the four treasure chests and, uh, sorry, six. Four treasure chests and two hidden items in the pots, and that's literally it. I'm glad that you can just clip through NPCs now, instead of, like, instead of, like, them getting, like, forced into a corner and you have to wait for them to come out. That is such a nice quality of life improvement. Could have actually taken the rat tail to uh, the guy. So the sealed cavern is the next mandatory dungeon. The sealed cavern, where Every door can probably kill you. As far as enemies here... We got Evil Bat, Screamer, King Naga, which we already killed, Miss Vamp, Yellow Dragon, Chimera Brain, and Trapdoor. Mamamaku, Jigoku, Jigoku desu. Doa wo kuroshimasu.
ご注意くださいすごい。Come back to the map here and just double check, make sure I didn't miss anything. You know, that feeling you get when you're missing something, but you're not really. Puts us right in a monster closet. These, these empty rooms here are reminiscent of Final Fantasy II's monster closets. Like the original Final Fantasy II, which, you know, you can play in Final Fantasy II Pixel Remaster. Man, that game was a mess. A lot of rooms and dungeons, if you didn't know where you were going, you would go into them, you would get teleported into the middle of a room, and literally every tile that you walk in said room would force you into a battle. Usually with a very, very tough enemy. I'm gonna climb down this rope here. This one is, this bestiary here is pretty easy to miss. Even though, I mean, it's a bestiary, it's useless. It's like, why not just cast Scan? Oh, actually, wait, no, there's some enemies that、uh, Scan actually doesn't work on. So that's what bestiary is for. Treasure chest here contains light sword, but we already have a stronger sword. Defender is already too good. And we're about to get an even better sword after this dungeon. Yeah, I mentioned that I could have actually dropped off the rat tail at the blacksmith, but. I didn't. It's like you can drop off the rat tail, but you can't actually get the Excalibur until you're able to go back to the surface again.
So Rydia just got Flare. Uh, I would say that Flare is probably Rydia's best spell. For, like, uh, individual enemies. Whereas Meteor is best against, like, multiple enemies. Especially, like, strong enemies like Pink Puffs. But, uh... I think that, you know, it's because Meteor, or sorry, Meteor has, like, such a really, really long casting time, but Flare actually does not. So, like, if you're going up against, like, individual enemies, it's like Flare, the, uh, the casting time is just really, really low. And also, it's like, it doesn't even cost that much MP. Upon getting the crystal, go across the bridge here, and uh, now we're going to be fighting Demon's Gate. Or Demon Wall. So to start, yeah, we're just going to have uh, Rydia queue up Flare have everyone like attack, jump, do whatever. Stone Gaze is only gradual petrification, so really this whole fight is just a DPS check. Just have Rydia do the uh just have Rydia keep casting flare. Debating whether to cast Haste or Berserk. The correct answer is Berserk, by the way. Yeah, this Demon Wall actually does not have a whole lot of HP. It's more threatening at lower levels. Where it could actually kill you.
Wow, the fucking 4D chess. Gets controlled by Golbez. Says he's not under control by Golbez. And then proceeds to steal the crystal. Kane, you a bitch. Now we're going to get a drill put on the airship because, you know, we just need to keep adding things to our airship. Pimp my airship.
now is a very good time to actually give the uh, give the uh, the blacksmith the rat's tail. Oh, actually, wait a minute. No, 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 no. My bad. No, we don't actually give give the give the blacksmith the rat tail. We have to we have to go over here, and we have to bring the hovercraft here. Oh man, I I suck. I'm sorry. I forgot. I have to actually give the rat tail to the uh, to the gnome over here. Yeah, I just call him a gnome, because he's like an underpants gnome. I just voice him like an underpants gnome. It's really hard to put down this airship for some reason, because you just freaking magnetize it over to this tile. It's like, bruh, thank you. Can I get on the, uh... The ship. There are a few items here. There's like four of. They just get tougher and tougher to find. I think they're all like in the patches of grass. Holy, are you all giants? <clears throat> I mean, Harley, are you all giants? Jesus Christ! Still looking. But I should have known better. It's all in the grass. Right? Nope. It's got to be in this pipe. Pot. No. Yeah, sorry. It took me a while to find... Oh, there it is. But pretty much everything here is, like, useless. Christ! This is the rat tail I've been looking for! Alright, here's some ore in return! Yeah, this guy for some reason just really likes tails. I don't know why he why he wants his tails so badly, but he but he does. Also, we can't go to the underworld with this airship, so we have to go back and get the other airship. But I'm pretty sure we no longer need this airship. I don't think that there's like anything else that you know need it for. If you got everything in like the uh, Eblon Cave, there's kind of no point to it. But now we're going back down here, and we are gonna give the rat tail to this dude over here in what is called Cuckle's Smithy. We're just going to give up Cecil's old sword of legend for specifically this. 
but we can't do jack shit. Not until this dude is done. So we have to go back up to the world map. As I'm pretty sure I'm about to show you firsthand. Like, I tried exiting the area and re-entering to see if he would do anything different. But no, it only changes if you go back up to the surface and then come back underground. Hey, give me some time. Don't rush me. No, dude. The fucking world is in danger. And I need Hattori Hanzo steel right now. Actually, I just went ahead and cleared all this dialogue before going back to get the Excalibur. Yeah, we're not flying to the moon just yet. We gotta go back and get that stupid sword. I don't know why they couldn't just, like, straight up give you the sword. They just had to make it seem like, oh, it takes time. It's like, yeah, sure, let's just get the fucking stupid sword at the end of the game. When we can already get Ragnarok from... Fake Bahamut. In, like, the final dungeon. It's a sword, it's really strong. For no particular reason why, it just... It just it just does more hit points, man. It just does more hit points worth of damage. 
It's not like bigger or sharper than any other sword. It just does a bunch of damage points and it has a really cool name. Now we go to the moon with this shit. At least Excalibur does 9,999 damage when thrown. This is true. This is true. Oh yeah, if you go talk to Yang's wife now and then go back to Yang and use the frying pan on him, you'll get a knife. Which can also do 9,999 damage, but it's too late because I'm already going to the moon. Over here in this cave is Hummingway Home. If we go over to this Hummingway right here, we can get 99 sirens. Which, by the way, 99 sirens is requisite to be able to get everything that we need for the rest of our achievements. It'll just make things happen that much faster. This is an addition, I believe, that is made to the PSP version of the game. I don't know about the DS version, but basically it just makes it so that you can farm pink puffs a lot easier. We're just gonna go ahead and sell the rest of like, all the items, they're just like not even useful anymore. Oh, actually I have confirmation from someone who's played this game far more than I have. It was not in the DS version, and fun fact, it wasn't in the Pixel Remaster at first either. So it's something they added to the PSP version and then added to the Pixel Remaster later. Being able to buy sirens from this humming way. Yeah, all the elemental items are pretty worthless by now. It's like we're at a point where everything just does like raw DPS by the end of the game. We're closer to the end of the game. kept the blood sword for some odd reason. I guess because I thought it would be useful against Flans, but it's like you have Rydia, and if the objective is not to get KO'd anyway, why use why use the blood sword? Why use the blood lance? It's not really much point. I mean the ogre killer is still really good for the final dungeon. Like I kept it for the final dungeon. Cause there's like a bunch of giants and shit down there. Avenger we can go ahead and get rid of. Avenger would have been a lot better if it could have been used to cast uh, Berserk on party members. Light Sword is just straight up money. Doing another quick double check. The poison axe is is like worthless now. I don't even know why I kept it. But I keep uh, I just keep this skill for sirens because whenever I do grinding, I'm just gonna get like a buttload of money anyway. And we're gonna go over here and land. Meanwhile, in Final Fantasy II, Blood Sword goes brrrr. So in the uh, in the moon surface, we got White Moose, we got Purple Bavara, we got 
black flan. But at this point, if you've been killing flans up to this point, the only thing that you actually have to kill is the black flan. Because we encounter white moose pretty early elsewhere. These lunar paths over here. A couple of the chests might contain monsters, but it's like nothing threatening. Crosses off prokaryotes and eukaryotes from the list already. sure we got the uh, all of the pudding, pudding type enemies. I almost said pudding. <laughs> Oops. I guess for some moment I was checking for a uh, like a secret passage or something. But this fight will clear uh, abyss worms off of the list. Yeah, Abyssworm seems to counter with Blood Feast literally every time you attack it. Man, should have noticed that sooner. We got Balloons, Dark Grenades, Black Flans, White Moose, and Abyssworm. So all that's left is Lunar Virus. As far as enemies go on the moon's surface.
now we're in the Tower, sorry, the Giant of Babel. We got uh, Mech Soldiers and Searchers in this battle. If you attack a Searcher, it'll summon another monster, which uh, could be basically any monster that appears in the Giant of Babel. As far as I'm aware, anyhow. Just based on the way that uh, summoners and uh, puppeteers work. Tower, or Giant of Babel is a very, very linear dungeon. It doesn't really... It doesn't really... Uh, it's not like, not like confusing where point A and point B is. Rearranging party, putting Fusoya, Rosa, and Rydia in the back row. Because it would be very easy for something like a mech dragon or something to just like wipe them out really quickly. So additionally, we got Femurs and Centurions this fight. Which would leave Last Arm, Giant Soldier, and Mech Dragon. Soldier is also susceptible to Ogre Killer, by the way. So if you equip that on Cecil, it'll actually deal an absolute buttload of damage. Probably at Cecil's current level, it might it might even do 9,999. Another chest here. Yoichi Arrow. Yeah, this mob seems to appear an awful lot. Last arm over here, being an enemy that uh, shows up in a treasure chest, we can actually go ahead and cross that off the list. So 
all that's left is Mech Dragon now. And Mech Dragon can be found by using a Siren, but before we do that, we are going to use it. Okay, maybe not use a ton. We're just going to save. If we use the alarm in this room, we will not summon a mech dragon, so we have to proceed to the previous room. And then after that, we got like two boss fights back to back. But it's fine, I mean, we're already pretty OD as it is, so we might as well just go ahead and do what we gotta do. I like to use all of my Soma Drops and Golden Apples on Rydia. I mean, Fusoya, you know, he's... We only, we only get Fusoya for literally one dungeon. So there's no point in using any buffs on him at all. Quick, uh... Sort by items, and then we'll swap out the potions for the uh, sirens because we're actually going to be using a lot of sirens. And it just cuts down the amount of time needed to actually get into a battle. So, yeah, as you can see, uh, sirens will summon mech dragons here without fail. Because we're dealing with an individual enemy, we can just keep casting Flare over and over again. I think there's a reason why I didn't attack with uh, Cecil or Edge. I actually have no idea why. What am I doing in this item menu? Oh, right. Focus of Cider. Oh. Well, why was I defending? That's kind of silly. Yeah, there was no reason for me to do any of that. I could have just casted Flare again. <laughs> Fucking pass, Carsey. Whatever. It's done. There's also a uh, vendor here at the save point. I actually have no idea if that vendor is there in, uh, like, say, the PSP version or something like that. But, uh... I actually took this opportunity to... do nothing. Because we don't actually need anything. I mean, we can buy cottages from them if we need to, which is, you know, it's good because leveling, leveling up is actually quite easy in the, uh, in the Giant of Babel, especially when you're fighting, like, uh, mech dragons over and over again. You can fight mech dragons over and over again if you, uh, encounter a, um, if you encounter a, uh, a searcher and said searcher happens to summon a bunch of mech dragons. So, to start the uh, battle with the four lords here, we just uh, gotta start by throwing an elixir. And then we'll have Rosa cast Shell, and then we'll throw another elixir. And then we'll cast... I don't know what we're casting. 
what are what are we gonna have Kusuya cast? Oh, protect probably. Yeah. All right, that's that's valid. Not so. Now we can use Bacchus' Cider. It's Cecil, uh, under Berserk. We'll have Rosa cast Haste on Rydia. And then we'll have Rydia start casting Thundaga. Fusoya is going to cast Haste on Cecil. You know, it's good to have just an auto 5,000 damage here and there. It's like the more haste we got on our party members that can actually do damage, the better. But then Daga is like kind of a no-brainer on this form. We're not going to bother with like any summons or anything like that. Of course, Barbarisha is in her, uh, in her tornado form. Barbarisha. Oh. Damn, I barely squeezed that one off. Anyway. So, <laughs> Barbarisha goes away pretty fast. I guess we're just gonna heal Ruby Conte, alright. But Ruby Conte, you know, he's, uh. Sling and dick right now, so it's easy to, it's easy to just cast Lazaga on him now over and over again. I mean, yeah, he healed us, we heal him, fair trade. Yeah, the four lords here are super easy because you don't have to worry about like when to attack and when not to attack and things like that. You don't have to worry about them changing phases or anything like that. They're just always going to be like in their weakest phases. Yeah, sorry for me, like, obnoxiously singing the names of the Elemental Lords. It's, 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 it's an obscure reference to, like, this Final Fantasy IV video on, like, Nico Nico Doga. Which is, like, a Japanese, like, a uh, YouTube site, basically. Where some, uh, where some people made, like, a, like, a, like, an animated video where they just, like, added lyrics to, like, that whole boss fight song. And it was just, like... The four elemental lords. It was a it was an internet meme for a while. Oh, is that is that what the person's name is? Hyadine. They also made like a video of, with like a with like a song about like the uh, elemental lords. I guess I guess like. I don't know, I forget I forget what the what that song was in the you know. Anyway, so we got attack node, defense node, and CPU. We just need to take out one, and then we just need to keep casting flare. Yeah, when it casts reflect on itself. And it will. All we gotta do is just have Rosa cast dispel and 
just keep casting Flare again. I guess I thought that Ashura would come in handy here for some reason. I'm not even sure why I casted that. Either way, I, you know, there's no harm in like throwing a few of our like more useless weapons. that dispel. Let's see what happens. Man, look at that. The casting time for Flare is like... is like really, really low. It's like near negligible. It's like Flare almost casts like immediately. It's pretty good.
explain real quick over to Bahamut's cave. Because we're getting some fucking summons now. Before we go in, though, we are going to do something that I forgot to do before I saved, and that was use a cottage. Cave of Bahamut has a few enemies that will also appear in the Lunar Subterrain, such as Selene, Guardian, and Dark Sage. Although Selene, Guardian, and Dark Sage actually show up in treasure chests and uh, Lunar Subterrain anyway. So there was ultimately no reason for me to kill any of them. Also, so does Giant Warrior. Giant Warrior is another enemy that shows up in a treasure chest. Dragon is definitely a monster that needs killing. Does not appear in any treasure chests or any like mandatory battles. Or at least like mandatory battles according to this particular route of the game. There aren't very many actual enemies in this dungeon though, just a few that appear in Lunar Subterrain. But before we uh, talk to this guy, we gotta make sure that we're healed up all the way. Because that's a behemoth. So here's what we do with behemoth. We're gonna cast But well, we're just gonna like make sure we take edge up maximum first, I guess. But Behemoth counters pretty much every single attack. I think at the time of this recording, I was still like trying to figure it out. Uh, what the actual battle script for this guy was. He's got like about like 40k HP or something like that. It's not a terrible fight. Yeah, basically any of these uh, hooded figures that we talk to are actually behemoths in disguise.
and Cecil almost got waxed there. Oops. Silver Dragon, you know, just DPS it, whatever. But it's just another enemy that we can cross off. It is another non-mandatory enemy that can be found in the Lunar Subterrain. So that would basically leave Gold Dragon, Little Murderer, Aramon, Wicked Mask, Zemus' Mind, and Zemus' Breath by the time we actually get to Lunar Subterrain. Dry Ether really quick to get Rydia back up so she doesn't tap out in the middle of the fight. So Bahamut only has one attack, and that is Mega Flare. And it casts Mega Flare whenever it's uh, going to... Whenever it's uh, down to zero, whenever its countdown gets down to zero. We're going to start with casting Haste. It actually casts slow on Bahamut, I think. Oh, I didn't mean to cast that again. Either way, Haste and Flare is a pretty powerful combination. Highly recommend it. And he didn't even he didn't even get to cast Mega Flare once. I mean it's not that Bahamut is a particularly useful summon either at this point in the game. Because when you got Flare, you know, you've got you've already got like optimal DPS right there. Anyway, we're just gonna teleport out of here now. And make our way over to the uh Lunar Underground. back to the overworld to do a couple of things right quick. Chief of which is healing ourselves for the next segment, which will be rounding up some enemies. I guess I should probably get my flu shot then, huh? Shut the fuck up, Pass Carsey. So after much deliberation, I decided that I was going to... <laughs> um. Why, you're an asshole, Pass Carsey. Shut up. Anyway, after much deliberation, I decided to re-record this segment. Well, not really re-record this segment. It's not even re-recording. I had to freaking export it from my stream because for some reason, I lost the raw of this.
And uh, this whole segment is basically just mopping up things that I was missing in like the uh, overworld, underworld section. And in the next segment, you're going to hear me apologizing profusely. And I decided, you know what? I wasn't going to do a half-assed job. I was just going to download the stupid stream highlight because it's better that I have something for this segment than not at all. That's not the enemy we want, actually. So, I got uh, Hell Divers and I got Floating Eyeballs when I was outside of Baron. We need to get uh, Death Flowers next. I actually have no idea how I encountered Death Flowers. Because it's the only enemy that we were missing outside of uh, Troya, if you remember. I just decided that I really, really death flowers before though, so... Shut the fuck up, Pascarsi. Shut up. Shut up. If I am being honest. Shut up! So what, there's like a- there's like a- Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Man, that cat looks really worrisome. I sure hope it doesn't blast for me. Wow, you finally said something smart, past Carsey. Man, we were just we were just memeing the shit out of this blaster yesterday. I just want to find. I want to find this fucking flower. Come on. Thank you. There we go. The video game gave us a death flower after all. Okay, all right, after that. So now. Go to the underworld. We'll just run around here and every monster ever. Well, before we go to fight every monster ever, took a detour into the Sylph Cave in order to get the Sylph Summon. <laughs> and also the Grimoire. The Grimoire is an item that allows you to summon stain off the ceiling. Any item. Not any item. God damn it, I'm getting distracted by fucking past me fucking talking in the goddamn fucking lower left corner of the screen. This is so weird. I'm currently on stream commentating over a video of me playing through this segment on stream. This is probably the most meta thing that I have ever done. Yeah, we talked to we talked to that self and then we get the uh, self summon and if I recall correctly, I didn't even check the bookshelf over here to get the grimoire. So, yeah, just 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 check the bookshelf and get the grimoire. Chrysalis. I'm surprised you can land on top of this cave. What specific enemy are you trying to find? I'm trying to find like a bunch of them. 
and the specific enemies like, that pass Carsey's. Bloodflower, Hellflapper, uh, Gorgon, Gloomwing. Huh. Maybe pass Carsey doesn't do a terrible job of describing what's going on on stream. Yellow Dragon has now been taken care of. All right, Pass Carsey, just take it from here, man. I don't care. There's anymore. our Hell Flapper. Seems like he's just about to say like the exact Hell same flapper. things. That's what I named my hemorrhoid. Wow. Pass Carsey is actually kind of funny sometimes. Uh oh. That is a very, very worrisome cat. Except when he's desperately clinging on to memes that were only supposed to last for, like, I don't know. There's our blood flowers. A day. Alright, so those are, those are taken care of. Let's see if I can't find Gorgon. Wow, this is actually going by a lot faster than I thought it would. Maybe what I should do is I should just like go to the uh, the three tile peninsula, and just try there. Yeah, this peninsula over here has like some pretty strong enemies. Man, how are these guys hauling around whole ass cottages? I don't I don't understand. Okay, there's Gorgon, there's Medusa. There's Bloomwing. Holy shit, we got it done so fast. Jesus. Alright, that's every enemy in Underworld. Let's move on. We gotta go back to Cave of Summons, and now I gotta find Belphegor. Belphegor, but also two grimoires, which were otherwise unavailable to be picked up. Segment? Oh no, not yet. No, no, no. We looking for Belphegor now. Pazuzu looking ass. Get your ass out here. But what if die? Oh. Thunder dragons? Really? Well, this was unexpected. I thought I had to find them through a fucking summoner. Oh, well, the more you know. Wow. Did Pass Carsey just own even further Pass Carsey? 
I guess so. I will kill these dragons though because they are good EXP. Today would have been a good day to do car seat betting. Well, it ain't too late. There you are, you little piece of shit. Fucking gargoyle. How much longer are you going? Uh, probably for about another hour or so. That's that's a lie. That's a lie. Past car seat and therefore present car seat can go all night long. Run my ass up to town tonight. Watch some comedy. Oh, you're talking about a betting tourney. Oh, shit. Okay. The last two grimoires can be found on the bookshelves in the God, weapon shop. So using why, why is it that we gotta do grimoires here? <laughs> And the armor shop. Like, why couldn't we just? Why couldn't we just take the goddamn thing? Oh, maybe it's because we needed to get Bahamut or like visit the moon or something. Oh, the Tex-Mex burger. Hmm. Man, maybe that's what I should do. Is I should just go get a Tex-Mex burger. Okay, so I did all that shit, and now I can go to the moon now, I think. I don't think I'm getting good RNG like that ever again. Okay, maybe past car seat did moderately okay. I give it an X-Play score of 3 out of 5. So, uh, I regret to inform everyone that, uh... I actually fucked up. And... There is a segment between this segment and the previous segment where I had gone and, uh tried to mop up any overworld encounters that I missed in the uh, overworld and underworld and I uh, looked for the video on my solid state drive but I couldn't find it anywhere so it means that uh, it means that I fucked up your boy fucked up and needs to figure out a better redundancy method so he doesn't miss any more segments. Unfortunately, I don't remember which enemies I was missing in that segment that I actually did up to that point. I reckon I could probably grab, fetch like a past stream or something like that, but I don't know. It's not, it's not particularly exciting. I did the best that I could to get as many enemies as I could.
Hopefully there's another list you can consult. Yeah, maybe that's what I could do, is I could probably just like... I could probably just like look back in like my past broadcasts on Twitch and just add that in. Anyway. About the only other enemy we're, uh... The only other summon we're missing, the only other boss summon that we're missing is Odin. I completely forgot about that. Because Odin is just so not noteworthy as a boss or a summon. Headed back to the moon. Getting ready to start the expedition to the lunar subterrain. So yeah, if at the time of this recording I uh, happen to get that whole segment, then yay. But otherwise, I, uh, I do apologize. Now I'm just selling, like, uh, redundant things that I don't really need anymore. Ogre Killer we're keeping. Blood Lance is actually quite useless. Blood Sword is kind of useful, but Blood Lance is, like, useless. Just completely useless. off our sirens. I'm actually holding off on buying anything else because I just want to be able to top off sirens. Because we're going to be using those a lot. Also, I should mention achievements such as like the achievements where you kill X number of enemies or you farm X amount of gold. Basically, you just, you just get those. Like you just get those passively throughout this whole playthrough and it just doesn't even matter. Oh yeah, Lunar Virus. There were like two more enemies on the moon surface. And that would be Dark Grenade and uh, Lunar Virus. So those are done, those are all mopped up.
Tile on the left restores HP. Tile on the right restores MP. Although really, I think MP is like the only thing that you really need to restore. You can just go into the menu and heal that way. It'd probably be quicker. And like the time it takes to actually like get to that tile. I was uh, deliberating whether or not I actually wanted to go ahead and do parts of the Lunar Subterrain, but then I realized that I hadn't really practiced this much, so I decided to bounce. And just save the game. I probably actually just could have teleported out. I was thinking about teleporting out there for a minute, but then I was like already out of there. I guess I couldn't have cast it any. Nah. Whatever. Too late. And that's how that should go. So now, the Lunar Subterrain, as I mentioned before, because we took out a bunch of enemies in uh, Bahamut's Lair, all we need is uh, Gold Dragon, Aramon, and uh, Lil Murderer, and also the three like sub-bosses, Wicked Mask, Zemus' Mind, and Zemus' Breath. So as I mentioned before, you know, you open this chest and uh, and you fight these two giant warriors. Really, we can just, you know, just 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 go all out. Just use holy, use flare, equip Kane with the uh, ogre killer. He dead. I decided to teleport back to the world map here because it would have saved time not getting into a bunch of enemy encounters. In those sets of tiles. Next we're going to move out to the left through this hidden wall, through here, up here, there's some monsters here, Selene, Guardian, and Dark Sage. Dragon protects the first of Edge's two ultimate weapons.
Yeah, White Dragon's a pushover. We're gonna cast Teleport again, just to, uh... Get ourselves out of here. So we don't have to, like, go back to the start of the dungeon that way. into the dungeon we have to go into this hidden passage in on the right hand side of this cave formation I'm gonna take the flame whip and I can't speak right now I'll take the flame whip grab the dragon shield exit through the north Lunar Subterrain B3, uh, the only items that we're going to be getting in here are going to be through a couple of hidden walls. We got Dragon Helm. Dragon Mail. Dragon Gloves. Just equip all of those on Kane. I'm pretty sure that's like Kane's best set of uh, armor, short of getting the uh, Adamantium armor. One of the encounters that we missed, but uh, gold dragons actually appear in twos over here. I kind of expected to find these guys in a gold dragon, silver dragon mob. One treasure chest in that room. You probably thought it was monsters, but nah, it's an elixir. Just a reward for your bravery. There he is, little murderer, trying to sell you his mixtape. Don't cast lightning on him. It says he's weak to lightning, but if you cast lightning on little murderer, he'll uh, he'll actually fuck you up. I'm not kidding. Kemoth, we already know how to handle these guys. Just, you know, DPS and let Rosa heal if need be. Okay, 
can't really deviate from these stairs either. Here's Aramon as well. Once we once we defeat Aramon here, then it's like the last enemy that we actually have to fight. Well, that we actually have to go out of our way to look for. Before, like, the last three floors, which is, uh, basically the Zero Mist stage. The core of the moon, as it were. Red Dragon and Blue Dragon, just get rid of them as quickly as possible. previous room, we gotta make sure that we take the downward exit so that we can fight this behemoth and get whatever's in the chest here. I just say whatever's in the chest here because, you know, it's not really, uh, it's not really important whatever it is. I'm actually very certain that it, that it is not an important item. Crystal Mail, all right. Crystal Mail is actually good. We can equip that on Cecil, but actually, no. Don't don't we we don't want to equip Crystal Mail yet, because if we do, it'll actually make Cecil immune to Berserk. Now this battle over here, I absolutely forgot to my entire party before going to fight these red dragons. So kind of caught me with my pants. Kind of caught me with my pants down. You gotta be careful because yeah, these guys can like just attack your full party for like a thousand damage each. And it's like if they did that back to back, it would have absolutely wiped me out. Or wiped out one of my characters. Ask Carsi, you piece of shit, what are you doing? Heal! Heal! Heal, dummy! Get out of here. There's another monster chest. This time with Dino Zombie and Dark Sage. Seeing that it is an undead enemy, you could use healing items. Probably cast life on it, I don't know. Crystal Helm is good. Is 
this room over here that I came out of, make note of it because we are going to go back here and be using sirens repeatedly in there in order to encounter pink puffs. Without sirens, you are not going to encounter pink puffs except maybe like 1% of the time. But you can use sirens and encounter them 100% of the time in that room. Artemis arrow, I believe, is probably the strongest arrow in the game. By going down into the left over here, we can... Uh... Walk across this hidden bridge over here, then go down, pick up this golden apple. Yeah, basically we just ignore any and all random encounters for the rest of the game and just run away from all of them. Another behemoth in this chest. God damn, I am tired of behemoths right now. At this point in the game, I was just like really, really tired of behemoths. And now I can see why watching these videos and talking over them again is because you just see like a million behemoths. It's even more cumbersome whenever you cast freaking Berserk on Rydia because you're freaking autopiloting. And lucky for me, he was already at like zero HP. We'll use the cottage. Absolutely necessary to make a save here, by the way, because Dark Bahamut is a dick. He just opens up with Mega Flare whenever he feels like it. So when I was recording this segment, I had to restart the segment over and over and over again until Dark Bahamut would actually deal whatever random amount of damage needed to be dealt to not kill my party members because the damage rolls in this game make no goddamn sense. The damage formulas in this game make no goddamn sense. All you need to know is that Dark Bahamut runs the possibility of waxing your entire party. But after that Mega Flare, yeah, just like lay into it as much as possible and be casting Kiraja. Oh, there he goes. He's casting Reflect. He's trying to cast Flare. Well, you know what? Here's what I have to say to that. Dark Bahamut, you fucking dumb. If you cast a spell on Dark Bahamut, then he'll actually cast Flare on himself because he's stupid. It's actually a shame I didn't actually record uh, the uh, 
Dark Bahamut casting Flare on itself. I think it might be a bug. Like, I think when they were uh, coding the enemy AI for this port of the game, that they just, like, didn't patch that up. But, uh, yeah, if you cast a spell on Dark Bahamut, it will cast Flare on itself whenever it goes to cast Reflect. But now we have uh, Ragnarok. That'll be uh, Cecil's ultimate weapon. Excalibur's a little pencil dick sword. We don't use that anymore. Ragnarok, though. Ragnarok is big and girthy. If we're talking about weapons that have cool names and deal lots of points of damage, you know? Ragnarok is the one. Excalibur a little bitch. For this chest over here, we're just gonna cast, uh, just gonna cast Meteor. Reason being, Selene Guardian actually has very, very high magic defense. We'll cast Haste, and we're just gonna defend and wait for Radia to do the job. Do the deed. One of the few enemies, Selene Guardian, that can actually, like, not take 9,999 9 damage. Just making a quick pit stop into this save room over here. I was about to save, but then I realized, you know what? The rest of these monsters and the rest of these uh, bestiary entries are going to be really, really super easy because I already know where they are. So why not just go ahead and take care of them? Plague is just a DPS check. Cast Flare, attack it, jump on it, cast Holy. It doesn't do anything else besides cast Haste on your characters after casting freaking death sentence on everyone. So beating Plague gives you the Holy Lance, which is Kane's ultimate weapon. Lunasaurs are uh, basically just, uh, they, can act, they can cast Reflect on themselves, so it's like, you know, don't fuck around with that. Meteor is a spell that cannot be reflected, so it's actually good to go ahead and queue up Meteor. Yeah, because Ragnarok is a holy sword, it just it just does a stupid amount of damage to the Lunasaur. All that's left is these last two ribbons. So we're going to equip the ribbons on. Rosa and Rydia. Although at this point in the game, I don't really think that there's anything that can actually cast any negative status effects anymore. I don't know 
if you figured this out yet, but Edge is really not that good of a character. It's like, why couldn't I have just had Fusoya instead? I mean, some of the items he throws do 9,999 damage, but as a general utility character, he's not that great. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's not Dark Bahamut that actually uh, casts shit on himself. It's Wicked Mask. I forgot. Wicked Mask is the dumb, dumb enemy. Because it just casts Reflect All on your party. I don't think even the player can cast Reflect All on his party. Either way... Oh no! We casted Haste on Wicked Mask! I hope Wicked Mask doesn't do anything! Other than cast magic on itself, like a dingus. Final what the final sealed weapon over here is the Masamune. Ogopogo is basically uh, Leviathan, only it can do uh, tidal wave back to back. So the best thing to do is to just uh, keep jumping, keep attacking, have Rosa keep curing. You don't even really need to cast like Berserk or nothing. You can see the uh, the mild panic there. Realizing, oh fuck, I should have cured. Seriously, about this point, you can just auto battle and win. You already casted Kiraja on yourself, that's really all you gotta do is just auto battle. Because it can't do anything to prevent you from healing yourself. And that's about the only thing, you know, at these levels that is uh, preventing it from actually killing you. Basically at like level 50 onward. All of these bosses are just are just really really weak. So all that's left here is a uh, few more treasure chests, and we gotta encounter Zemus Mind and Zemus Breath. chest monsters in this area though. Thank fucking Christ I don't gotta fight any more behemoths though. I was sick of fighting those. Okay, so there's Zemus Breath. I don't remember if Zemus Breath can like curse your whole party or something like that. But we're gonna open by casting haste on Rydia. Same as usual. 
like you can probably imagine how like a lot of fights are gonna go from here on out. It's just cast haste. On Ridia. Cast Berserk on Cecil probably. Quake did fuck all, didn't it? Last enemy that's left, Zemus Mind. As you can see, he uh, physical attacks are not very effective against him. I think I mostly just started casting uh, Berserk on Edge to make him like moderately useful. Whatever, that's done. I was already, uh, I had stopped short of entering the uh, room, the final boss room, because I wanted to like start making my way out. Reason being, you cannot teleport out of here. Still gotta go back and farm pink pups though, so that we could get the pink tail. And we're gonna do that by saving at this save point over here. By the way, this save point is the closest to the pink pups. Now for the fun part. So here's the 
here's what we're doing with these old fucking pink puffs, all right? Basically, the best way to handle this whole pink puff situation is to just use that save point as an anchor point. And we're just going to use sirens in that one room to trigger the encounter with pink puffs. So every time our MP gets low, we're just going to go back and use a cottage and just save. I opted for that strategy because I didn't have enough elixirs or anything like that to be able to just fight these guys forever. But that's okay because now we can start amassing a lot of gil. By the way, the strategy for this, uh, just don't even bother with Berserk like I'm doing here. I figured out a lot later that the most efficient way to deal with the pink puffs... Sorry, I know it says Flan Princess, that's what they're called in uh, Pixel Remaster. But they were called pink puffs in the uh, Super Nintendo version. But yeah, the idea is to just uh, not really bother with any, any buffing. Rosa is actually like significantly more useful casting Holy. Because then we can just like hit the auto battle button and uh, just like let the fight win itself and then just heal outside of the fight before using another siren. But otherwise the strat is uh, keep casting meteor, keep casting holy, Cecil attack, edge attack, cane jump until they're all dead. I actually like to grind these guys for level 70 because they give off good EXP and also because, you know, it just kind of kills two birds with one stone because eventually you'll get the pink tail. Time to fast forward. See you on the other side. After about three segments, I finally got a pink tail. Cool, huh? Now we can teleport out of here and uh, go use that bitch. So anyway, now we gotta run our ass all the way back to the overworld. Once we do that, we're gonna go talk to the uh, the gnome who just wants weird animal tails. back here, we can actually land the uh, Lunar Whale next to the Hovercraft and just go directly to the uh, go directly to the Gnome get our adamant armor it's a bit tough to land here, but whatever airships move fast in this game I'll talk.
talk to you only if you bring me a tail. Jesus Christ, it's a legendary pink tail! I'm just gonna give that to Rydia. Because Cecil's already got really good armor now. But now, uh... Fly over here and make a save before we start farming for the summons that we get from beating enemies over and over again. So first up, I'm gonna use sirens here. And uh, we're gonna have Rydia cast Thundaga and have everyone defend. And just only ever use auto battle Thundaga for like everything. I thought about testing the waters with Thundara, but Thundaga is actually the best move. So there, after so many encounters, we get the Cockatrice Summon. I flew back to the moon momentarily in order to get more Sirens. But I boo booed here. I thought for some reason this was <laughs> humming way home. No. It's the wrong hood, fool. Yeah, just the moon. For a minute. No big deal. Yeah, look at all the look at all the money we got now. So I could just get like 48 elixirs. That all came from the pink puffs from before. Next up, Goblin. Same dealio, only this time we're going to cast... Thundara. Oh, actually, I guess Thundara was enough, huh? But after a while, I decided to just cast Fire instead. Because Riddy is magic is high enough to just be able to cast fire once. And just wax that entire enemy party. Next we're gonna land the uh the flying whale carcass over here. Every time I see Lunar Whale, I'm always reminded of that episode of South Park where they send 
the, uh, where they send Free Willy to the moon. And he's just, he's just laying there dead on the moon at the end. So I don't know, every time I see, every time I see Lunar Whale, I'm just always reminded it's like a freaking whale carcass or something. For mind flares, just a couple of regular attacks will be enough. You know, it's like it's like don't bother with magic here. It's like I'm contemplating, but then I realize there's only two of them. So we're just gonna have everyone defend. And here we go. There we go. Mind Flayer. We got every single summon in the game now. We done did good. But I will still fly this black chocobo back to our giant flying whale carcass. going to top off our sirens because we're going to be fighting a lot more pink puffs. We're going to be fighting all these pink puffs to get up to level 70 just because of how quickly we can encounter them, how quickly we can beat them. And during those encounters, we will eventually, eventually, also be able to get a full set of adamant armor for everyone. Yeah, by the way, don't ever 100% Final Fantasy on Final Fantasy IV on any other version except the Pixel Remaster, because you seriously have nothing to prove by, like, trying to 100% the game on, like any other version other than like pixel remaster and PSP all it is is just you know you're 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 just lowering the percentage chance of like encountering pink puffs and encountering drops or like receiving drops for like summons pink puffs etc cetera, etc cetera. like seriously just 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 don't bother I would say they're good for, like, casual playthroughs otherwise. But yeah, don't be a stupid asshole and 100% it on SNES and DS. Only extra dumb idiots would do that. Haha. <laughs> well, maybe DS. That's about the only uh, exception I'd make to that. Because I'd like to play the DS version someday. I like this game enough to play it on the DS. I probably won't ever play After Years, though. After Years looks fucking dumb. Okay, okay, okay. 
play the DS game, but I won't 100% it there. Right, moving down. Over to this save point over here. It's going to be the uh, closest save point to the pink puffs again. And here we go. Now level 70. I fast forwarded that whole segment by like 8,000%. But overall it took about like, I don't know, an hour and a half or something like that from the levels that I was at. And I was still able to get like four more uh, pink tails. So now we can just go back to Earth and Grab like four more sets of adamant armor. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. pretty much the uh, last of our questing and, you know, this, that, and the other. Basically, all that's left now is the final boss.
Jesus Christ, the legendary pink tail! Jesus Christ, the legendary pink tail! Christ, the legendary pigtail! <laughs> Jesus Christ, the legendary pigtail! So basically, yeah, yep, we're completely decked out, completely buffed. I don't actually know if, uh... I don't actually know if, um... In Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster, they changed the, uh... The levels and stats, so that there's, like... No degradation after level 70. I don't remember if, like, that's a thing or not. Well, I, obviously, I didn't investigate. I don't know if that's a thing or not. I just know that in the uh, in earlier versions of the game, after level 70 was uh, when you would uh, gain levels and stats would actually start to disappear for some weird reason. And I gotta say though, this uh, this experiment of like recording a no KOs 100% walkthrough for a Final Fantasy game has actually been a lot of fun. actually even finished commentary for it too. So I really 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 hope that people enjoy this video. I will definitely try again with like a more popular Final Fantasy game. But this was like kind of a good dry run as far as like figuring out the kind of content that I would like to do with like long RPGs like this. So hopefully you guys enjoy slash enjoyed. I will for sure be doing other games in Pixel Remaster though. I think I actually do want to do like all of the Pixel Remaster games.
I definitely want to tackle Final Fantasy 3 because that's the only like early numbered entry in the Final Fantasy series that I haven't actually beaten at the time of this recording. It's like the original Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 6 Pixel Remaster will be coming out soon. And I am all about that. I am all about that Final Fantasy 6. It's like as far as Final Fantasy games go, that are like really, really awesome. Could reuse like full on like high high production value remakes. Final Fantasy VI would be my choice. But I digress. The counter rate here is atrocious. I hate it so goddamn much.
So one thing you absolutely need to do is come into this fight with full MP because this cutscene here actually does not give you full MP. It only like uh, increases everyone's HP to max. Also, only Cecil can use the um, only Cecil can use the uh, the crystal. It gives him confidence at work and in social situations. And uh, I opened with slow because I thought that there was a chance that maybe it would work, but it actually doesn't work on Zeramus. Although maybe spider webs might work. I didn't actually try using a spider web instead. Anywho's in. So we're gonna have Edge just uh, throw every weapon that is, you know, just 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 a any 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 remaining weapons that we have. Excalibur, you know, just does like 9,999. When he starts like rumbling, that means he's about to cast Big Bang. So gotta watch out for that. Gotta be casting Kiraja. I have no idea why um, Rosa's targeting cursor went over to. Zeramus and not to a singular member in my party so I could cast all. I think the uh, the cursor memory is a little bit bugged. That uh, extra 9,999 heal uh, procs whenever Zeramus goes under 65,535 HP. Because that's when his second HP pool kicks in, I think. So it's like it seems like just like a random heal, but that's actually uh, Zeramus' second HP pool. It's a mechanic that has existed since like the SNES version. So you could actually even skip that second HP pool if you know the trick. Either way, Kiraja is basically all we need in order to be able to uh, nullify the damage that we receive from Big Bang. Flare, throw, attack, jump, Kiraja. That's basically it. Rosa's got enough MP to last the whole thing. There we go, that's uh, Final Fantasy IV. Completed with all achievements and no KOs.
you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out all of my other challenge runs, walkthroughs, no damage runs, speed runs, etc. on my YouTube channel. By the time I come back to doing anything Final Fantasy related, I'm more than likely going to work on Final Fantasy VI or Final Fantasy VII. Just to see if I can't, you know, make some traction happen with Final Fantasy games on my channel. Because it is a video game series that I like a lot, actually. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Twitch channel, where I record all the gameplay and all the commentary. Say hi, YouTube. If you would wish to support my bad speed running and challenge run habit, you may do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. New stretch goals soon. Go check them out. Next project, moving back to some Resident Evil for a bit. I'll catch you guys next time. I had a lot of fun making this. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. So, bye for now.